partners how y'all doing welcome to the outlaw nation show here live on the outlaw nation channel and i am the outlaw john roke i'm excited to be here tonight it happened to fall uh, organically on a two may the fourth is happening out there in the world so happy for all my star wars fans yeah, i'm a sure pop star wars seeing so many great posts all over social media seeing some fun youtube videos we got a lightsaber video that dropped that was out of this world literally and, uh, and figuratively, which was really great. So I hope all of you have been enjoying today. Maybe some of you got to watch Bad Batch. I watched it this afternoon, finally. I wanted to wait until May the 4th. I got it a few days ahead of time, but I wanted to wait until May the 4th to really kind of savor the Star Wars feeling. And I got to tell you, as I tweeted just a few minutes ago, you know, this is the first time in my adult life that something has come along that is fully my Star Wars. As close as Rogue One came to being my Star Wars, it still pulled back a little bit from the darkness that it could have gone into. This one was really uh, fantastic. Bad Batch has some of the darkness, has still a little bit of the light, but it's a lot of uh, espionage and you know uh, uh, backstabbing and, and people with hidden agendas. And there's a curious new companion that you got a lot of questions about. And one of the Bad Batch, something happens. I'm just going to put that out there. Something happens that makes you go like, oh, what are we going to get now? So phenomenal stuff. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. Tomorrow, the Geek Buddies will drop their review of it. Laura Kelly coming back to be our guest for that uh, episode one review. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. We're going to record it tomorrow. We're going to drop it. We have a couple hours after we record it. And if you haven't noticed already, we dropped our Invincible Season 1 spoiler review earlier today around noon, 12 p.m. PT. Uh, me, uh, Michael Vogel, and Shannon McClung talking about it for about an hour, breaking down that entire season. And Michael, you know, uh, used to be an executive uh, uh, in charge of animation, some animation at Hasbro. He is a freelance executive now, executive producer, showrunner for some animated series. So you'll get some in-depth analysis of how things were done throughout the season with Invincible. I'm telling you, it's a great, great review you guys need to watch for sure. I'm still a newbie at analyzing animation, but I know what I like and I know what I don't like, and it's great to have someone like Michael who would explain the technical aspects as well as bringing incisive commentary and Shannon McClung as well. Don't forget, later on this week, we got uh, Impolite Truth. Dorina Adeliano took the week off last week because she got her second shot and she was out of it, ladies and gentlemen. But she will be back on Thursday. We will be dropping some fun on Impolite Truths as well. And I got a big announcement. And we really got a big announcement coming up later on uh, in the show. And by we, I mean my special guest tonight. Really excited to welcome her back to the Outlaw Nation show. It's been a bit, so it's going to be fun to catch up with her on the show tonight. You know I worked with her at Collider, got to know her. We spent many a walk going up to Panera and having some iced tea or having some food or grabbing some Chipotle, grabbing that pizza, and then walking on back uh, to deal with all the stuff going on there and uh, jumping on to do all kinds of stuff there at Collider. She is one half of the movie couple. She's a movie reviewing. She's a movie critic for the HCA, the Hollywood Critics Association. She's a pundit. She's a content creator. And now she's a D&D &D writer even. So I'm very excited to welcome to the channel and welcome to the show tonight, the great Wendy Lee. Wendy, how are you? Hi, I'm so good. Good to see you, Roka. Great to see you too. I love the shirt. Talk to me about the shirt. So, Tano. So, this is with a new line from her universe, uh, which recently I just got uh, accepted as a part as their brand ambassador. So, I've, I'm in the community now. And nice. You know how much I thank you so much. I, you know, I love her universe, even without being an ambassador. <laughs> My closet is <laughs> filled with her universe stuff. So, this is a part of their calling it the May the 4th uh, line. And it's right. Ahsoka is just a part of it. So they have, this is a Her Universe top and it has a little, little tie here, little yeah. like football jersey. And then they nice. also have a unisex um, hoodie that the, with the asymmetrical zipper. And then oh. the hood, when you pop it up, you can have like Ahsoka's little marking on the inside mm. and it's unisex. So, you know, other people like 
guy, girl, you can wear it, sweatpants too, unisex. And right. uh, yeah, it's and they have biker shorts. So it's super uh -huh. cute. Now, what does this mean you're going to be a Brit? Now, are you going to start showing up on the runways of multiple conventions oh. to show off the stuff? Like, what is it? What does it uh, involve here for you? So essentially, every now and again, they will email and they kind of say, hey, we're thinking about would, uh, collaborating with you on this specific drop that they have coming up, whatever it may be. Um, right. And then you'll kind of go back and forth and discuss if you are, if you feel like you're like, the right fit. Are you able to commit to um, their requirement, with, whether it's like posting like one post on Instagram mm. or if it's a blog post here or you have to do like you have to hit like a TikTok and a, and a Twitter. And mm. if that's within your capacity to do, because you can always say no. And that's not like, you know, they're not like, oh, we'll never work with you again. So yeah, 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 it's yeah. a very much back. And so far, the experience has been really, really lovely. And there was some back and forth where, you know, I was kind of like, when can I post this? What do you need? So um, right. and off of this, you saw it on uh my Instagram and all, all was really required. They're just like, I yeah, just post like, you know, like a photo if you want. I was like, oh, this is about to be a full photo shoot. Are you kidding? <laughs> I don't just get new Star Wars clothes and not like style it differently. <laughs> right. Well, you know, we're, we're in 2021, uh, Wendy. We've survived to a degree. Uh, the COVID situation, things are starting to slowly move towards some semblance of normalcy. You know, people are showing up to the theaters again. Um, we're getting, <laughs> people are getting screening invites. Uh, pundits and critics are getting screening invites. So it's the machine is starting to slowly start churning again. But you take a moment here, looking at Star Wars now for this particular May the 4th, it certainly feels like there seems to be a bit of a new hope, for lack of a better term, <laughs> this 2021 May 4th than there was in 2020. How, how incredible or how much do you, what's the journey been like over these last 12 months here for you specifically? And how do you feel about May the 4th today? I will say, I don't even remember how I celebrated May the 4th in 2020. <laughs> I feel like 2020 is just in a void of my mind somewhere where I'm like, what I right. do on this day. Uh, there are some things that I remember specifically that I don't like to talk about because it just hurts. So oh, I locked right. those away in like Fair a little enough. box because there's some good stuff that okay stuff that happened in 2020. But mostly right. I was just like, it's not I just like to throw that into the trash can, turn on the garbage <laughs> disposal and put it all away. But this on. year, yes. uh -huh. this year is particularly exciting, not only because the Bad Batch has premiered a yeah. very long episode on Disney Plus, but also the theme parks are reopening. So it's kind of nice to see some social media posts, a couple of friends who are at the parks today. So they're at Galaxy's uh, Edge oh, wow. and they're sending me photos or on the rise of the resistance. Right. So just celebrating it that way is really nice to see as things reopen, people get vaccinated. Um, let's see what else there is. Can we talk about the lightsaber? Yeah, please talk to me. So there was like this super secret, like it's not an investor's day or anything like that, but there was some sort of um, meeting or press day, mm -hmm. I guess, with the, D the Disney peeps and the uh, theme parks CEO came out at the end with a lightsaber hilt. Yeah. And then he basically dropped the mic, but, you know, figuratively ignited the lightsaber and it ignited as in there was no blade. It was just the hilt. And then just you know, imagine how they do it in the movie. Right. It looked like that. And people are like, how is, is he standing there? Or some sort of like weird mirror thing that he's doing. It's Disney. So you can expect a lot of magic. Right. Right. And also no video photography, anything like that allowed within this meeting. So nobody caught uh, any sort of photo video of it. So yeah. it was just a bunch of bloggers, journalists saying like, this is what we saw. And the CEO at the end said, oh yeah, this, this is real. And wow. we're like, wait, what? So it basically, the blade comes out of the hilt, which typically right now, if you get any lightsaber anywhere, whether it's yeah. one from Galaxy's Edge, like a legendary one, or from um, other companies that make similar lightsabers, such as, um, I think, uh, Ultra Sabers and Saber Forge, I want to call it. Yeah, it, Saber Forge sounds right, yeah. Yeah, and they have, you know, it's, and I have like 20 here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I have like five. Um, and then, you know, the blade comes attached. <laughs> so if you want to, <laughs> so if you want to take it to Disneyland, you got to yeah. take the whole thing with you unless you want to just carry the hilt and Photoshop in later a blade. So with this, they debuted a quick little video on Twitter today of Ray. Looks oh. like she's positioned in Galaxy's Edge. It's on my Twitter. Uh, thank you to MK Songbird who sent it over to me. 
Um, I retweeted let's, it. Let's take a look at it. Take a look let's at take, it. Let's take a look at it right now. Um, yeah. So do just I have go the to. Sound? Okay, no, so I don't. It. Hold on. Let me turn the sound. Oh, you do on. have the sound on. I heard like it. An old, like an old man, I got to figure out the sound here. Hold on. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you got to do the right thing. Okay, share audio. There it is. Let's see. And uh, I want to make sure my audio is turned on correctly as well. It isn't. That's what I couldn't hear it. All right, cool. Now we're going to ah. go. Let's take a listen here and let's go back to the beginning. So, this is the lightsaber you're talking about. It was. Yes. Light. Darkness. Oh! <laughs> so good. Whoa! <sighs> let's, let's take a look at that again. Light. So good. Darkness. Whoa. Now you're saying there I thought you said there was a longer one. So let me go to your Twitter and yeah. share. Let's go to Wendy's Twitter and you get see, to see it at a slightly different there. angle. Yeah, let's see if we can take a listen to it uh and see another one. MK Songbird posting it here. Tags you wanted, I see. Okay, let's yep. see if there's a different angle to it. And I will share the video as well. What do you guys think as you're watching this? Let us know in the chat. Let us know what you think in the chat. <laughs> uh, all right. Share again. Share the it's audio. So Here good. we go. There's more. Don't worry. Oh! Even yeah, better. It's cool. Holy crap. How'd you like it's to be so the cool. Ray who gets to do that? Oh that is God. fantastic. I think I've met that Ray too, having gone oh, to really? Yeah, the parks. I, I want to wow. say I have a photo somewhere with the same with the same Ray. So <laughs> as far as Ooh. I know, that lightsaber that she demonstrated, I know it's yeah. a little it's a little hot in here. I gotta buy that thing. <sighs> I, I haven't wanted to buy any of those ones where you make like there's those eight hundred dollars, two thousand dollars one, but that one, if it comes out and makes the noise. Say yeah. good night. That's worth so, the price of admission, ladies and gentlemen. Good news and bad news for you. Good news is <laughs> that we will get to witness this in person. Bad news, I yeah. don't think it's readily available for the masses yet. What the hell? What, the what? Hell? I know I'm mad about that too because I would drop $500 <laughs> like flat out for this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'd have Sean Barito buy me one. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it basically looks like right now they're going to be using it and i'm not sure exactly what any other characters other than ray like i don't know if kylo ren gets to have his own like can you imagine <laughs> like that would be really cool but yeah they specifically want to use it on the galactic star cruise it's basically the wow. the star wars themed hotel that is going to be at disney world and then eventually right. at disneyland so they'll have you know as you it's a very like uh what is the word i'm looking for immersive experience yeah, yeah so once you check in you are basically in space you're in star wars you get the outfit you get your job tasks depending on how much time you spent there how many days you stay and what mm -hmm. things you pick one of the things you can do is interact with the jedi and you get to do like a jedi training so as a part right. of the performance and the interactiveness of it ray right. and so i uh, will have that lightsaber so it looks much better for her to have than yeah than to have like to carry around this long thing right where right, you know right, it's right. it's like well i have the same one at home and it's so it doesn't make it as real but this is straight up real so i find that really mm -hmm. interesting i think it's fantastic i don't know if it'll ever be available for the masses i sure hope so because yeah. i want one uh, so do i and and you know i remember we shot that video uh a year ago year and a half ago and we, we were using makeshift lightsabers to be able to use real ones like that would have oh. been Fantastic. Chris Taylor says people start buying lightsabers, then before you know it, people start losing <laughs> limbs and eyes. That's true, Chris. That's true. You know it'll happen. You know, you'll see as if people did people hasn't as if people didn't have lightsaber fights already. Now you'd actually see them for real everywhere yeah. you go. Pretty make the noises for make sure. <laughs> it, it makes, will it will it make the noise? Because it's at least the opening makes it's, the noise. It's gotta. Real? Oh it's yeah, gotta, the ones that they sell at the park right now does when you move it around oh, and when you okay. um flat they have a clash on flash, flash on clash. So uh -huh. when you clash with another lightsaber, it'll change colors. That is awesome. That is yeah, awesome. it's really cool. Wow, wow. All right, one fix is impulses here. Thank you, one fifty six. Good to see you. Thank you. Bad batch was amazing. Damn, I love Star Wars. 
absolutely 156, 156 impulse. And he hits a super chat, ladies and gentlemen. Super chat, the stream labs are open. You see the address right above Wendy's said. You see it. It's also pinned to the chat, and it's also in the description of this video. Wendy's with us for another hour and 45 minutes. So send in your questions, send in your thoughts and comments, send in your stream labs and super chats. Maybe we can get Wendy to like uh, divulge some stories. We'll create some goals here at the hundred dollar mark. She'll divulge an interesting Star Wars story, maybe, or a story from her life. At the two hundred dollar mark, another interesting story, maybe a celebrity story. And if we get to the three hundred dollar mark, maybe we'll get a massive uh, behind the scenes story of how she. Dustin and I will will lightsaber fight for you at the three hundred. There you mark. go, three hundred dollars, <laughs> Dustin and Dustin. We're I just not, volunteered my husband. Cool. He's like, well, his hands like. What'd you just do now? <laughs> but Wendy, yeah, Bad Batch was amazing. Let's go off this comment now to jump into the Bad Batch. As I said, just finished watching it this afternoon. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Certainly going to watch it again tomorrow morning as I make notes for for doing my review or hosting my review for it here on the Geek Buddies. But what is your feeling as you watch this thing? An hour and 15 minutes. Really a surprise, Wendy. I thought it was going to be 30 minutes. An hour and 15 minutes, essentially a mini movie, uh, and it was a hell of a thing and very engrossing. What did you think about it overall? I absolutely enjoyed it. I've been a fan of these types of Star Wars animations for a mm -hmm. long time. It started with my love for Clone Wars, and then when Rebels came out, became a fan of that. And when we met the Bad Batch in Season mm. 7, I was like, oh, I really would love to see more of them, you know, they're, they obviously operate a little bit different, different like mutations and whatnot. So they, I feel like they have all uh, a specific set of heightened skills mm -hmm. when it comes to way they, and, and then also the camaraderie and, and the, and the way they coordinate their attacks and mm -hmm. the way, you know, they perform in battlefields. I always thought it was interesting. So I'm really happy that they gave us a whole season of the Bad Badge. I can't remember how many episodes, I think I read somewhere in one of the comments was like 12 or 13 in, in, mm -hmm. in our reaction video. So uh, I'm very excited to see their story because I feel like this is the timeline and we got a little bit of a tease with um, the last season of The Clone Wars with Order right. 66 and you know what comes after that, who survives, how do they survive and where do they go until mm -hmm. we see them again the next time, sometimes in Rebels, other times in you know future movies. Right. So Sean says 14 episodes, I believe. Mm. So I think this is a great way to, because for so long, I think Star Wars, we kept on repeating the same story as in, if you look yeah. at the sequel prequel, sorry, the sequel trilogy yeah. is still kind of a part of that Skywalker trilogy. And I'm not saying that the Bad Batch isn't because they've all, you know, like it does exist during the time of like Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin yeah, yeah. Skywalker Darth Vader, all that mm -hmm. stuff, but this is still a set of a group of um, characters we really don't have much, much knowledge of other than what we right. saw in Clone Wars. Right, right, absolutely. So yeah, I love the episode. I love where they started. They had me crying within like the first seven <laughs> minutes, I think, seven, eight minutes, maybe wow. a little bit longer. And just throughout the thing, it was very much, I feel like a setup episode. It was, mm -hmm. it was long, it was, it was action packed, just action packed enough. Yeah. So it leaves you wanting more, but they also played out these drawn out moments where the, you know, the Bad Batch are having conversations with each other, questioning why Order 66, who is Omega, where right. do they go from here? And it's all a setup. So I can't wait to see what happens in the next, ep next episode and then weekly after that. Yeah, it was a smart move. Absolutely. I agree with you, Wendy. It is it is a good episode on its own. A lot of action sequences, certainly a lot of dialogue, a lot of conversations about who's controlled by who. Do you have to follow orders to be a good soldier? Or should you think on your own? What is the way to go about existing in this post now uh, in this beginning of the empire? You know, this beginning of the Galactic Empire time here with Palpatine and Tarkin and all that they're doing and all the changes that are happening to the clones. You get a lot of uh, interesting storylines that are presented. And so and one of the Bad Batch uh, kind of, uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but one of the Bad Batch kind of walks his own path. Very, very interesting stuff as I was watching it throughout as well. But I really enjoyed the conversations, enjoyed the dialogue, enjoyed the questions, uh, enjoyed some of the enjoyed the animation and enjoyed what they're setting up going forward. Now I'm excited to see what's going to come and some great voiceover work 
once again by so many uh, great actors who are involved here in Star Wars. Deep, the entire episode brought to you by Dee Bradley Baker. Yeah, Dee Bradley Baker. But also one one voice I did not know was coming back to do. Wait, really? Um, I did not know that person was coming back. Oh. I had no idea for whatever reason. Didn't hear anything. And when he showed up, I was like, what? Oh. It sounded a little disembodied to me i adjusted a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe, i was just yeah. kind of like well because i still the voice still sounded like how i feel the character we know sounds like but the image didn't match the character right right, right. you know Absolutely. without without giving us sorry i'm being so vague but i kind of <laughs> laughed about it but i was overall more excited than anything else where i was like yeah. oh my god we're seeing this happen and some adjusted origin, uh, one adjusted origin story, uh, just slightly adjusted if you've read the comics that were connected to the origin story. When you watch the show, you'll know exactly what I'm referencing. That was kind of interesting to see as well. So it's going to be fun to break it down. Uh, from what I checked on IMDb, it's 16 episodes. So I'll be oh, curious great. to see um, how we how, how how they go about fleshing this out. Because, you know, nowadays, Wendy's, Wendy, people rarely go past 8 to 12, 10, 12 episodes now. I know. It's very limited series, especially when you look at Disney Plus um, and what they did with Falcon and Winter Soldier and what they did with WandaVision. These aren't normally a lot of episodes. So 16, at least according to IMDb, was a bit of, of a surprise to me overall. I'll take it. I'll take the 16. <laughs> because you Hell know, yeah. After, yeah, I know. More Star Wars is never a problem. Um, <laughs> I think I saw somebody say in the comments, like, are they all going to be one hour? I believe the, the like, traditionally, they're, like, about 26 to 32 minutes or somewhere yeah. in between, including including credits. Right. So I, I don't know if they, now that's going to be a thing where every episode is one hour. Like, would I complain? No. no. Um, but I think with how many episodes we, we get, if it's 14, if it's 16, then right. the half hour mark would make sense to me Right. for these type of shows. So I think before they used to hit about 30, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that's right. That's how Clone Wars used to be about 30. But we just saw Invincible for eight episodes go about 45 to 50 minutes an episode. So certainly, the t and got great reviews, good numbers. So the taste is there to go more than 30 minutes. So a possibility exists these could be longer. But I was really surprised by an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, I had originally carved out time this morning for half an hour. And then when I saw how long <laughs> it was, I'm like, well, I'm going to push that to the afternoon and really savor this thing when I have time to really savor it. It's uh, so good. Uh, yeah, the music, everything. Yeah. Oh, the music. It yeah, and, and, and listen, everybody, for those of you who are watching, yeah, the music was stellar. Absolutely. That's another reason to watch this thing. They are just hitting on all cylinders now with their animated stuff. They brought back that Clone Wars, kind of wrapped up everything there in Season 7 and just kind of just went from there. We're already working on Bad Batch. So excited that they've picked that right up and kept going without a drop at all. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what these other possibly 15 episodes uh, of Bad Batch are going to have into it. If you're watching us right now, we got about 90 y'all watching us live. Thank you so much. Please hit that like button. If it's your first day on YouTube, it's that thumbs up button. That's the one you want to hit. Hit that like. If you're watching us later, do me a favor. Leave a comment. There's nothing wrong with pausing it. Leave a comment down below. The comments and the likes really help the visibility of this show and this channel very much. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe down below as well. Hit that subscribe button and let us know uh, that you want to see more of the content that happens here on the Outlaw Nation channel. Wendy, and remember, send in your Streamlabs and Super Chats. Wendy's got something to say at the $100 mark. She's got a story for you at the $100 mark. At the $200 mark, we may have some crazy celebrity story that maybe both of us were involved in. And at the $300 mark, they're going to lightsaber fight between the movie couple. Who would want to see that? So if you're going to donate, make sure you donate throughout the show. And Wendy, we got two that have come in already, two Streamlabs. One from Drunken Prayer says, No Star Wars question, but I see Small World on the shelf. I was just wondering what Wendy's involvement with D&D is and have you played any of the Star Wars RPGs like SAG Edition or the Fantasy Flight Line? Wendy? Oh, take it away. Uh, I will say for D&D, <laughs> so um, just in case you're confused, and I don't think I made it very clear to Roka, so that was 100% my fault. Um, oh. I'm not a writer for D&D, the source books or the player handbooks right, 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 or right. the adventures. Like That's like far, far, far beyond my uh, knowledge uh, because I feel like I need like even more years as a player uh, mm -hmm. to build up that sort of knowledge. But there is a, if you play D&D, &D, if you play any sort of CTRPG, you know the website D&D &D Beyond, and that's where they have um, all their medias for um, uh, fit, 
digital media for mm -hmm. their source books that you can purchase, uh, adventure paths, and they also have um, a section for articles. So they have a lot of really great contributors such as Amy Dallin, uh, yes. Riley Silverman, and I recently contributed an article to that portion of the D&D Beyond website on how to run your own fight pit uh, as a downtime activity in your campaign. Mm -hmm. So uh, any of my fellow TTRPG players out there, go ahead and give it some love, take a, take a <laughs> read. Thank you for the D&D Beyond editing team for doing such an amazing job working with me on this. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's good when editors know uh, how to make sure you're putting out the best product to represent. They have a beast of an book. editor. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Real good. I love when editors actually work on the pieces that are being put out. Uh, let's see. We've got something from. Oh, yeah. Now, what, what, what oh, about your Marvel. RPG, Star Wars RPGs, oh, Saga right. Edition, Fantasy Flight? So I have not played, believe it or not, any of the Star Wars RPGs, which like breaks my heart to think about now. Oh. So I got to see if I know somebody who can run me through. Something okay. like that. The systems that I've played, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, 5e is is what I've been playing most frequently. Pathfinder yeah. 1, Pathfinder 2. Um, I've played other systems such as Kids on Bikes. We got to get Roka in on one of these for <laughs> sure. Down. 10 I'm Candles down. I've played. Dustin, what else have I played? Is that it? Did I name them all? Um, no. Uh, what was the other one? That we... uh, shoot, I, had, um, um, I said 10, 10, 10 Candles, Kids on Bikes, Kids on Brooms. Kids on Brooms. And I think I think that's it. Oh, we didn't play so that's yeah. pretty much the extent of it for now. I did participate in a Jasper's game day uh, D&D 5e game last night, DM by Riley Silverman. It was a lot of fun and all the uh, proceeds went to uh, suicide prevention and it's all oh, wow. week. So if you just go to Twitch and you type in Jasper's game week, they are running it uh, all week long. So it's mm -hmm. really, really lots of fun. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, we got one more stream lab that came here. Jake Yakov. Hey, Jake. Good to see you in here. Jake. Jake said, it's been over a year, but I'm still shook that I'm watching TV and saw a commercial with Wendy as a ninja. I was like, hold the fuck up. Is that my lady dog? I'm all the way here for this episode. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate Thank it. Yeah. You. Yeah. What do you say, what do you say there, uh, uh, Wendy? How cool are you? What, your, your episode, I mean, your commercial is still showing. Directed by one half of the Russo brothers, right? Both. Or is it both Russo brothers? Yeah. Yeah. They badass. were just on set. They were, they were, I think I had, I remember seeing Joe on set one day. And mm. then I remember seeing um, Anthony on set the other day because I had three days. And then they also had an awesome uh, AD, uh, Ari Costa, mm. I want to say, who was also involved in extraction. So he works okay. with the Russos a lot. Um, just a phenomenal, fun time on set. Everybody was lovely to work with nice nice yeah forget they did extraction i was like you know all these uh, like cherry and uh 21 bridges i totally forgot oh, so they good. did extraction as well which was awesome for sure uh yeah. all right keep keep sending in your stream lab super chest like i said at the hundred dollar mark wendy will tell us a really awesome story 200 mark maybe we'll get a celebrity story in the 300 dollar mark we got a little uh, little D, a little uh, lightsaber action going on here to wrap up May the fourth before the end of the show. So give it some love, ladies and gentlemen. Send in your contributions as we go along. Wendy, let's move on to Marvel. Let's talk Marvel. about that trailer. What we might circle back and touch on Star Wars a little bit later, but that trailer that they released uh, uh, yesterday was it yesterday morning or two mornings ago? Lord Almighty, yeah, Monday morning. Lord Almighty, I wasn't ready. I had a very very busy weekend. I woke up, rubbed the sleep out of my eyes, girlfriend sleeping next to me, and I popped in. I go, Marvel's got a trailer. What's this all about? And Stan Lee starts talking, and I'm a mess. A mess throughout this whole thing. And then screaming and excited with my <laughs> hand over my mouth by the end of the trailer. What did you think about this thing? What did you think about what was announced? We got uh, a Marvel, Miss Marvels. We got Fantastic Four logo. We got some more Shang-Chi stuff. We got more footage from Black Widow. Talk oh, to man. me about all of this. It was, I, I felt like when Dustin and I sat down to watch it and we did mm. a little reaction video for it, the title of the video said, and I'm so happy I didn't log on to Twitter prior to seeing like, yeah, you know, because I think uh, some aspect of it would have been ruined for me. So I saw that and I was like, let's just do it real quick just for time. And then um, side note, you know how YouTube now does the thing where they do your checks? Yeah. Yeah, so that took yeah. that took five hours. Oh man, it's never taken five hours. <laughs> so it was an eleven minute video. It took five hours, and I was like, "So people are like, aren't you guys gonna react to this?" I'm like, "We have. <laughs> I've seen it multiple times. It's just not so, I, there's nothing I can do about it. I, I've done everything on my end, and there's nothing I can do because it's now up to YouTube to to, to do the check. So, anyways, right. um, so when I first saw it, it says 
Marvel Studios celebrates the movies. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Like, you know, and I just thought it's probably a quick little promo of like, hey, here's like Black Widow that's coming. And then maybe like another like Shang-Chi, like just quick flashes. Yeah. I didn't think about it would get us all, you know, give us all the other stuff. I certainly did not think it was going to make me feel all the feels mm -hmm. in the beginning, especially when they showed the, I love that they played this in the video too. Somebody uh, filming the Avengers Endgame yeah. <laughs> reaction, which I appreciate so much because yeah. it's uh, really nice to kind of get brought back to that moment. And it, it's in theme with celebrating the movies because we're as things oh, start sure. to open up. Yeah. We're about to go back, you know, if you feel mm -hmm. comfortable to the theater and then they just dropped like bomb after bomb after bomb in the best way possible. I felt like I was at hall H or yeah. something. Great points. Yeah. Great it point. was yeah. amazing. And I remember saying in the video too, I was like, I mean, I don't really think they have much to show us not even thinking that we were going to get to see footage for the Eternals. Yeah. Talk like, about that. That was what? great. We got so much people. Gemma Chan, Kumail Nanjani, Salma Hayek, uh, uh, Richard Madden. This was awesome Angelina to see. Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Yeah, her, this was awesome to see uh, this eternal stuff. What did you think when you were looking at it? Were cosplay ideas already rolling around in your head? What was your reaction as you were watching it? I haven't seen enough. I needed, I needed more. <laughs> I was really so shocked when their faces popped up. I'm like, wait, I haven't seen these people. This is the Eternals. Oh my God, what am I watching? <laughs> Angelina Jolie. And then it was like the next slide. I'm like, what just happened? What did I watch? It's so good. I um, haven't fully researched into the Eternals. So I feel like mm. I need to do like a digital. I think there's an omnibus yes. uh, of the Eternals. So I feel like it? I need to. It's on my other bookchef. I was going to Yeah, I feel like you, you showed it off shelf. before. Yeah, yes, I have. I love that. Yeah. I hear that go the ahead, art go ahead. Yeah. is beautiful. And uh, so I can't wait to dive into that, to know a little bit more. But also the exciting part is for me, just as one, a comic book movie fan, and just mm. as like a, you know, a fan of the cinema altogether, going in for movies like this is going in with the unknown, not knowing yeah. what I'm going to see. I did that with Guardians of the Galaxy. And I was like, I don't know what, I don't know anything about this. Let's just go and watch it. Right. And when I did, I was like, this is so far away from what I thought it was going to be. And I love it. So I kind of want to do that with, um, with the Eternals. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't decided. What? I have until November to decide. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did that with, I think with, with one of the movies I waited until I watched it with all my friends and you, you know, you have that moment where you're like, you know what? I just want to be in a crowded movie theater. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes the critics and pundits uh, that we go to see the movies with Wendy on our screenings, uh, uh, they would get lost in the movie they were watching as well. We would all be cheering, but it's a rarity because most people are there to like make their notes and do their reviews. It's very important stuff they're doing as well. Uh, but you know, occasionally you get a movie that's going to like knock you on your ass and people forget that stuff and really kind of dive into being a fan again. And I think the Eternals is one of those ones we've been waiting so long for that movie when it's been getting delayed and delayed and delayed, you know, with Black Widow, I think Black Widow is going to be fun to get it on July 9th. But this one, I think, is the one that people are waiting for as kind of it feels like the official film kickoff of Phase 4, even though Black Widow is kind of the unofficial kickoff, or probably is the kickoff of Phase 4. It just feels like a residue of the past. Eternals mm -hmm. feels like a, a opening the door to the new, you know? Yeah. And I also like what you said about, you know, going to screenings and, and seeing um, mm. journalists and critics kind of getting lost in that movie and, and they're mm. like not jotting down in their notebook. Cause like, it's not that they're not paying attention. It's just that they know they have a job to do and that yeah. is to report yeah. on the film or they have a junket the next day. So if they don't like actively, like, you know, write down certain things they may later in the beginning be like, Oh, what was that one thing that would have made an interesting question? Yeah. So kind of for you, are there any movies for you that you've completely like went in with full intention on like, you know, making mental notes or physical notes and then completely oh. lost yourself in the film? Yeah, probably infinity war. I mean, I felt oh. so conscious crying at infinity war because I was like, fuck, I shouldn't be having this kind of emotion because I'm supposed <laughs> to be here to be watching it. And we all got, it was like kind of the pseudo premiere of it. We all got to go uh, and, and be in the theater to see it. And I was just like shocked at my reaction to it. Cause I thought for sure, that you know, um, I was just gonna have a great time at the movie and then keep, you know, compose the tweet or whatever. But then when those moments happened, I could hear other people sniffling <laughs> and getting emotional as well. So I felt like I was felt like I was seen, as they say, 
Uh, and I didn't feel so bad about it anymore. But certainly, that's one of those ones that I was able to kind of just kind of let go a little bit. But it's a rarity. It's a rarity for sure. Uh, yeah, what about you? Did you have one where you felt like, oh, wow, am I the only one? Is a lot of people getting involved in this? I would say, aside from both Endgame and Infinity War, because we all know, like, everybody done lost their shit when all that <laughs> stuff went down. Like I did. Yeah. I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, he, couldn't shove him up pop, enough popcorn into my mouth to be like, oh, right. my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> um, I would say the other one is Parasite. Uh, oh, I got to yeah. see it at TIFF. And yeah. that was one that I'm like, okay, I got to take notes. Like, I have such a high expectation for this movie just because, mm. you know, the trailer is really intriguing. Like, I have no idea what this is about. And, you know, I got to take notes. So I fully went on, you know, with – it was my first time at TIFF. So I was like, I got to take this very seriously <laughs> with the notebook, wrote down title, wrote down director, actor's name, which I always do in all of my notebooks because people are like – people. When I do TV, like TV show reactions, and people are like, what are you writing in your notebook? I'm like, it's normally just bullet points. So yeah. I can later go back because there's so, so many things that are happening that yeah. I'm not taking full on like, well, in this scene, the actor enters and looks, it's like, no, I'm just bullet pointing like what I want to talk about. But yeah. Parasite, my, my page was blank. I didn't have to write <laughs> anything down. I, I know that movie by now, like watched yeah. it six, seven times backwards and forward it's so i definitely me, myself along with every single person in that theater like lost themselves oh in my that God. movie it was so stellar. good so many twists and turns so many surprises oh. and shocks so much great acting you know a stellar stellar movie deservedly uh one best picture i i you know obviously it could have gone to 1917 as well and i'd have been just as happy yes but it was nice for parasite to win it for sure uh, listen, we've got some uh, super chats that have come in here. Mormouth Hout says, waiting to see the MTG Russo Netflix series. Uh, am I miss? What is MTG? Am I not thinking straight? What's MTG? Do you know? You gotta, uh, be, a nerd. You gotta be a real nerd for this one. Magic the Gathering. Oh, there Have you is. played? I've never played. No, oh my God, we gotta teach you. It's so fun. Dustin and I have, well, Dustin has like tons of cards downstairs. <laughs> I think Ben Bateman hosts a podcast on Magic the Gathering still and goes and Shut plays or reports on i think i think it's ellis correct. plays too does he really mm -hmm. ellis wow surprise i think he's ellis. like real good i haven't i haven't tried my my deck is probably minuscule compared to his i can't imagine ellis playing without i mean the sarcasm of ellis playing magic the gathering i've got to experience that it's probably point pretty good I'm, he's probably I'm sure. pretty good what's he not good at that's the frustrating <laughs> part of yeah of Mark for ellis. Real. uh what fixes impulse says i'm so excited for the fantastic four yeah i want to see dr doom one of my favorite villains in the Human Torch is one of my favorite superheroes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, Wendy, got that logo right at the end. Uh, um, ben Goddard thought it was a Phase 4 logo, and I was like, no, 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 that is the Fantastic, Fantastic Four logo. Four. Yes. When do you think we're going to get that? You know, the rumors of John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, a lot of people fan casting that, but I feel like that ship feels like it's sailed, and now they're looking at maybe younger people not that they're you know old in the tooth or anything but like maybe they're looking at younger people to kind of slide in and be this fantastic four have you oh. thought about this at all have you thought about any other place they might go with this or do you really have your heart set on krasinski and emily blunt oh 100 percent. i love seeing them yeah. they're them work together one i love them as they're like the couple i love oh, them yeah. so much Absolutely. um i love their work in the quiet place mm. so I would absolutely love to see them work together again, but be able to, you know, speak to each other and not running from those type of monsters. <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, and let us know if you all are watching and listening, let us know what you want to see for fan casting for Fantastic Four. That was great. Now, what about Wakanda Forever? We got that. We got oh that gosh. as the as the uh, call for or as the title rather for the sequel to Black Panther. Uh, and uh, a lot of people, or, or sorry, uh, Ryan Kugler said is one of the most difficult scripts he's ever had to write because he had to kind of edit on the fly a couple of times here now for the sad passing of Chadwick Boseman and a couple other reasons. So what do you expect to see from Wakanda? For, what does that title hint at for you? To me, it feels like a perfect tribute to uh, someone who is really legendary to me, like Chadwick Boseman. Mm. Um, and I know the time was short lived and he had so many, so much more he could have shown. We didn't get enough of him, but yeah. his impact on not just Hollywood, but, you know, within the MCU portraying Black Panther um, is just so amazing. And that very easily, very quickly became like one of my favorite MCU movies. And mm. I remember seeing him for the first time in Civil War. 
And this was at the time, you know, a meeting a character that had not had his own standalone movie. Mm -hmm. So we knew not really much else about Black Panther other than what we had seen on, unless you read the, you know, the comics before, like say your general audience moviegoer, they wouldn't know. So the way they did it and his performance, everything was powerful. And I can't see anyone else playing Black Panther. I can't see anyone else being recast as as T'Challa. Will they do it? I don't know, but I feel like, they're taking this really seriously and they're not, if they were to recast, it wouldn't be just anyone with that said, the Wakanda forever title, I think is kind of saying almost like, you know, we will remember you Chadwick forever. Like you are. Yeah. That's to me, that kind of solidifies that how much he means to everybody that's worked on the film as well as, you know, the, the fans of the film Mm -hmm. and, um, and to not also like shove in our face, like black Panther too. Yeah. Yeah, you know, absolutely. let's like remember him as into in, instead of just like, like okay, who, who's next? Who's the next right. one? Right, right. Good point. Yeah, absolutely. I thought so too. That's a great thing. I, I also think it's going to be a thing, uh, a, a film that's going to focus on Wakanda fighting for its representation in the world. It feels like it'll feel that way as well. Wakanda Forever essentially feels like you know elevating Wakanda overall and making sure people remember. Um, uh, why what Wakanda stands for and what it's all about. So it could be very interesting. Maybe outside forces attacking, what have you. Dark Jedi Knight says, what lightsaber hilt would you have in the background of your shows? For Wendy, for Wendy it should be Ahsoka's white sabers and for Roka, Mace's purple saber. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that suggestion. I respect it. What I do you say, it. Wendy? Do you like the I, Ahsoka's white sabers? I love it. I do have them too. The fulcrum oh. ones. Okay. I have them. Yeah, right. I bought them. That was the first thing I bought at Galaxy's Edge. I knew when Dustin and I finally got a reservation when it first opened, and yeah. I said in my head, "Okay, tickets. They don't really cost extra because like we had already. We're we're past. I don't actually remember how we did it. I remember we had to pay for tickets, but I knew if I were to buy anything, if I could buy only one thing, the Ahsoka lightsaber was it. And I've heard that they have the possibility of being sold out because she's a popular character." So before right. anything else, I went and stood in that line. I got my lightsabers and I hauled them around all day long. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'd they're have to they're say, heavy too. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they are. I think you told me about them when you first got them, uh, what they look like and how uh, he- heavy they were. I remember that distinctly actually for real. I think I would take the dark saber. I'll be honest with you. I'll push back on on the purple saber. I would love to have the dark saber. That's Mandalorian. I feel like I'm yes. a Mandalorian. I feel like that's the one uh, species or the one uh, planet I connect to the most Mandalore. So to me, that would make the most sense to have the dark saber sitting up behind me. Uh, and the bookcases are going to make a comeback, ladies and gentlemen. Too much reflection on the poster wall from behind me. So we're just going to adjust and put some bookcases. Lady Outlaw says she's going to design it all over the weekend. So there'll be a nice. new look for the Outlaw Nation come Monday morning for sure. I'm so there you go. Because yeah, I can't design worth a crap. So she's the best. Uh, <laughs> Someone says, Patrick Lampus was bringing back Killmonger. Such a horrible idea. You can't do better than that death scene. Well. Is that the plan? That's not the plan, that's, right? That, some people have been suggesting that. Some people have been suggesting that. Uh, especially because Michael B. Jordan was asked about it for the with a, on the without remorse junket. And mm. he said, oh, I don't think I'm coming. I think there's a 10% chance that I'm coming back. And you know what that means, Wendy? Whenever they give any percentage chance they might come back, that means there's probably been conversations or maybe even an idea floated at the possibility of it. So I don't know. Uh, the, I, I understand where Patrick's coming from. Would you be unsettled if uh, we got to uh, Killmonger back as Michael B. Jordan? Someone suggested that because of the multiverse, that Shuri might go into a separate dimension, and it's uh, Killmonger who's actually Black Panther in that dimension because T'Challa was killed in that dimension, and Killmonger took over. Uh, and he's a good Killmonger, and they bring that Black Panther into this dimension, and I think that's a could be a dangerous idea, but I wonder how that would work. I wouldn't mind it if it happened in a multiverse setting because that can exist on a timeline of its own, oh, yeah. and it doesn't touch our what we know as as in the movies that we've seen them. Um, however, if they were to bring him back in like the Black Panther world and the MCU world that we currently know. Yeah, yeah. I don't love it. I, I love, I mean, I don't, here's the thing. I didn't love that they killed him. I understand why. 
right, the story right, right. and it was such a beautiful ending. And now I feel like, why are you going to, I just don't want to see them walk that back. Yeah. It yeah. would kind of, I don't know. I felt like the character arc ended that way for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it would take away so much from that conversation that you can't, you know, recreate, but like multiverse would be totally okay with it. Yeah. I wonder because it wouldn't be necessarily that Killmonger that had that conversation with that Black Panther. It yeah. would be a completely different Killmonger. And look, we're getting, in essence, what, two Gamoras? Or we got two Gamoras? So maybe the, one's still maybe. stuck in the Soul Stone, or right. she's, she's gone. Gone. I don't know. We're not we're, sure. We're going to find out, I imagine, in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So that's a possibility. We did have two Nebulas. So if, if having two separate versions of the same character is not. Uh, something the uh, uh, Marvel Universe has never done before. So they've certainly done it. So yeah, uh, the possibilities exist. All right. Let's hit a couple of these uh, uh, super chat or Streamlabs rather. And please remember to keep sending in your Streamlabs super chats as we go along. Wendy's here for another hour and 10 minutes uh, talking with us about everything. Justin Toner donated again. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. He said, hi, John and Wendy. Since Wendy mentioned D&D 5th edition and I play it myself, I nice. wanted to know what type of characters you have played so far, races and classes, Hopefully, my friends and I can get together and play our campaign again soon. All right, Wendy, Aww. have you played some characters, some classes, uh, or races? Have you played? Yeah, uh, and I'll just mention them across the board for both D and D and Pathfinder because they're they're even though they're not the same, they do share some. Mm -hmm. So last night I played. Her name is Senna Flyleaf. She is a um, wood elf druid. Uh, so I've played okay. that. I have, um, I roll dice on a show called Bedlam and Discord. It's on Twitch. Okay. Um, and that one specifically is called Odd Jobs. We just had our season finale. So we're on a break and then we'll be back in a few weeks to nice. continue on. And that one, she might be my favorite currently. She is um, a sparkly little dwarf barbarian named Glita with pink hair and Ariana uh, uh, Grande style high pony and she's obsessed with glitter but she's also a tank because the way I play I like to tank I don't like yeah. to like spell cast from far I mean that's all fine and stuff but like I'd rather just like be like wrecker and just like run in and take care <laughs> of it so those are the two characters that I currently have in two of my campaigns on D&D 5e for Pathfinder 2 second edition I play a uh, monk. She's just a human monk. And then in Pathfinder 1, I play a human witch. And she's wow. only level 4. Wow. So there's wow. four characters that are currently in my head. Yeah, I, I tell you, D&D I mean, &D, D &D is something that um, slipped right by me. I played it a couple of times in high school, but not that many times. I didn't have friends who were into it um, and who ran campaigns. But I did play... A couple of times with some friends uh, uh, who I knew, but it wasn't a consistent thing. So it would be. We gotta run you through a one shot it. or something. We gotta. Somebody's gotta call Joe Star and just. Ha <laughs> All right, I'm down. Let's make and, it happen. And do and do a one shot. Dustin can run you through a one shot. Dustin's can I be a, great... a dwarf? I want to be yeah, a dwarf that fights. Absolutely. All right. I'm like. Absolutely. I be... Give we can, we can set it up. <laughs> Come on. Give me a big beard. I like it. There you uh, go. <laughs> Mormouth Hound says the Loki series might give us some better ideas for where things are going with the multiverses. That's a great point. Wendy, yeah, mm -hmm. we've seen trailers already. And essentially, it feels like a buddy cop movie with Owen Wilson. Uh, what do you think we'll see from Loki with the multiverse stuff? Do you think certain things will be turned around? Certain characters will reappear? What's your feeling when we're thinking about that Loki series? I think that show is going to be as crazy as WandaVision, maybe <laughs> even more so. I think, I think uh, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier was quite grounded. Uh, Wanda Vision, mm -hmm. we we didn't really know, and it just played with so many different things. A little bit of that, like the magic that we really didn't get to see Wanda do in the movies, but we should yeah. got to really flesh that out in the in the film and sorry in the TV show. So with Loki, it's really interesting because I think often people have wondered where did he go once he picked up that tesseract. Yeah, and then where do we pick him up from? So like, how right. many Lokis are there? And now the possibility of like, is he actually dead right or could he could he not be dead right i don't know i mean the russos have said he's dead that loki is dead is what they've said well they didn't that say loki that they didn't use that language specifically but yes yes they're not lying <laughs> no loki is dead that's loki not a wrong answer right, right so potentially 
This show comes out when? June, right? June, yes. June. And Thor I Love think? and Thunder comes out 2021. Yeah. Uh, so, Thor Love and Thunder comes mm -hmm. out uh, what this this year as well is that is that correct? No, or not, year, not this year. year. Right, next year. Yes. So potentially so depending 11th. on how Oh wow. Okay, so depending on how the show goes then, we could yeah. see Tom Hiddleston back in the oh, yeah. movies. Oh. And, and, and remember Wendy, uh this is the Loki right after New York. This isn't the Loki that has lost his mom. This isn't the Loki that has developed a new relationship with Thor. You're this isn't right. the Loki that has been, this is the Loki that just got his butt whooped by the Hulk seconds or minutes <laughs> after he got his butt whooped by the Hulk. So this is a different Loki. Uh, and I think for Tom Hiddleston, that's probably going to be a lot of fun. And remember, yeah. we had that in Endgame too, where Thor was watching his uh, Avengers version of, oh, sorry, Hulk was watching his Avengers version of Hulk. Uh, in his endgame version of Hulk. And so it's just fascinating how they're playing with time like that. So I'm curious to see how they do that with Loki and if they're going to bring back what people enjoyed about Loki in the first place, that charm of him overall. We shall see. And what's uh, curious is they have that one shot of him sitting, it looks like on a planet and moon's got like a little bit like an orangey glow. And at mm. first thought, I thought that he was sitting with Natasha. I had said that in my reaction oh, video and the comment section was like, actually that's not Natasha. They're saying that that is lady Loki. Whoa. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. All it's right. not Marvel. Marvel slash Disney has not confirmed. So this is all pure speculation, <laughs> but you know, the fans are really good. Like sleuths when it comes to stuff oh, yeah. like this. Oh yeah. So they used to be part of our jobs. Find stuff in the trailer to talk about, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, we, we got we got 130 of watching us right now. Only 89 likes. Please hit that like button. Get us over 100 likes as, as quickly as possible. And let's start marching toward 150 likes. If you're let's watching us right now, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if it's your first time on YouTube, that's what that like button is. Hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please feel to subscribe. Please feel free to subscribe down below. Got all kinds of content coming out this week with uh, Geek Buddy stuff, with uh, Impolite Truths. We just had game time yesterday with Jay, uh, sorry, with Winston A. Marshall joining me for a two-man show. Wendy Lee Zaney tonight. And then uh, later on this week, uh, we might have something special for you. A little announcement maybe coming up in just a little bit. Uh, Mock Rank Review says, I arrived late, but Wendy is delightful. Like oh, all your you. guests. That's true. I agree. Wendy, have you been or will you appear in Star Wars Trivia or Gen Pop? in another league in either league <laughs> <gasps> that these are the questions that i uh, am afraid of i uh, i i would i participated in a free-for-all and i definitely didn't do well mm. um trivia scared me if i am playing to win but if i'm watching ah. as a spectator i do fantastic like there's no <laughs> camera on me. I'm not on a time crunch. I can be like the know-it-all. Like, don't you know this answer? Right. Like sitting in the stands, it's very easy watching a schmodown, which I love watching as a spectator. But you put yourself in like, now you're and maybe at home it's a little bit different. So maybe the pressure is off because at the studio, you know, it was eight cameras set up. It's like six lights or however craziness that it yeah. was when we, when we used to film them. So, and people are like, you know, like you hear... <laughs> If you say the wrong answer, you're just like, right. oh, God, everybody is judging me. That's the kind of pressure <laughs> I cannot handle. Uh, so <laughs> if they ever do like one for charity, if they ever do oh, like, just, yeah. like a fun one off, then that's a whole different story because I feel like there's no pressure. The The pressure is to be able to raise enough money for said charity. Yeah. Uh, so I would I would be more than happy to participate in something like that, like a little one off. But like as a league, um, I don't I honestly I would be dead last and if i was in a team match i am so sorry to whoever my teammate is because i wouldn't be able to pull my own weight <laughs> <laughs> fair enough uh, all right there you go ladies and gentlemen you have your answer uh doug developer says as an asian person i can't wait for shang chi absolutely yes. surreal to see an attractive and charming full asian male lead which should definitely break boundaries on the big screen and perhaps negative stereotypes off the screen yeah, when you talk to me about uh, seeing this trailer, uh, your experience not thinking about Shang Chi's not that far away in September. I think it's happening. What do you what What's your feeling overall about this? I am so happy, first of all, for Simi Liu mm. for manifesting this on a, like a Twitter, and he's worked very hard as an actor, he's right. trained very hard, and now his movie is. I know it's been delayed a couple of times because of COVID, but it's finally right. coming out. 
it's very exciting. I feel like he's, this man's the real deal. He mm -hmm. kind of like when you see Louis Tan, like they do their own stunts, they practice really, really hard. They train hard. Um, I am really excited to see Shang-Chi come to life mm -hmm. off the comic book pages. And also for us to get like for real this time, the Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> finally that was so yeah. bad when that happened i was like wait no what is this bait and switch crap i want the real mandarin i want it now <laughs> fair enough do you think he'll show up do you think trevor slattery shows up in this in in, in a cameo i think it'd situation? be kind of it'd be kind of funny if he was like maybe mid credit and credit he's like watching things go down and be like oh so that's the mandarin <laughs> i was playing him all wrong maybe something something silly like that if it's yeah. like that it's it's totally okay but other than that like let's let's let these these uh male leads you know have their uh and female leads like ha have their time on screen and i got yeah. tra travis trevor Tra travis yeah doesn't yeah. doesn't need to necessarily need to make a make a you know, an appearance, unless they want to do it for like marketing purposes, just to be like, Hey, yeah. remember me? <laughs> <Spider -Man? laughs> Hello over here. No, yeah, I'm really excited. And also happy, um, AAPI heritage month. To yes. Everyone. Yay. Yes, absolutely. Happy uh, AAPI heritage month for sure. AAPI. Oh, yep. AAPI. Right. Yep. 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 Absolutely. I think I said my own acronym. <laughs> <laughs> Buck Bradley, you says, I know it's repetitive by asking again, how should mutants be introduced to the MCU? Was it the blip? Cosmic rays, multiverse. Wendy, what's your thoughts on this? How Ooh. should uh, mutants be introduced into the MCU? Wendy. So I, I want to say if we want to be comic book accurate, then yes. these people are born with the powers. True. Very true. Uh, so with that said, I don't necessarily know how they're going to do it with the blip. Right. Because, you know, um, so maybe... We'll have to we'll have to see how they how they introduce it and maybe they start with and I know we're all looking at Scarlet Witch because like we all know we all know where this is going. Mm, right. Exactly. But we could potentially if if they bring her in just a little bit later and we can use her um father as a stepping off point. Oh yeah. For for the mutants and kind of start an origin story there with Magneto. And like I know in the both the movies and the TV show, it doesn't seem like her dad is is magneto but we mm. don't know if her that's her like real dad or if that's like you know what i'm saying so th there's right. there's a lot of possibilities for that they can use the multiverse i know we saw evan peters fiatro uh yep. coming coming in and even though we know him to be something something oh god i'm forgetting his name already that was what? inside westview aaron taylor johnson what are you talking about? Your PX? no what are you talking about? but his like name on the headshot Oh yeah, um, Boner. Boner, Ralph Boner. Right. Ralph Boner. We know that it's right. supposed to be Ralph Boner, but what if somehow later it is unveiled that that is, you know, Quicksilver from the pre the right. the other X Men film? But I think honestly, with that question, it would make it would really take away the comic from the comics. So I don't I don't think people would like it. But the blip mm -hmm. would make sense, or Wanda's Westview explosion would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. But I just don't yeah. think fans will want that. I think they want it to be um, closer to, you know, for, for the story to stick with the source material. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hear exactly what you're saying. Uh, Demon Lord uh, Illidan says, well, that 10 rings operative did break Trevor out of jail in that Marvel one shot. So we may at least get a reference of him in the movie. That's true. Uh, now, it That's wasn't true. Scoop McNary didn't break him out. Uh, Scoop McNary stole him out of the jail. So there's a difference there because he's got to make him pay for him imitating the Mandarin. So certainly they opened the door, and that was Feige's way of kind of saying, we're sorry, uh, and doing the Mandarin in this Shang-Chi uh, and, and the Legend of the Ten Rings is also a way of saying they're sorry for kind of uh, wasting the Mandarin in the way that they did. So it'll be I'll be curious. I hope Trevor shows up. I think enough time has passed. <laughs> that we can enjoy Trevor playing this part and people can let go. And of no it. hate on Ben Kingsley at no, all. Oh, of course not. Yeah. No, you know, no. it's it's it's, it's it's really the character. Yeah. Oh my God. He's so funny though when he does it. I, I, I would love I to see. I need more one offs with uh, Trevor Slattery just living <laughs> in the world for God's sakes. Uh, Mammoth Host was like, where's the high evolutionary in all this? Oh, interesting. Um, high, revo high evolutionary. I, I don't know. I think you might have uh, stepped oh, wait, out of my nerve did ability. Get, did we get stumped? Oh, it's by WandaVision. Okay, it's a character. Yeah, Marvel Comics 
Sure. All right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where the high evolutionary is in all of this, but I think we're going a little too fast to start looking at bringing, opening the door to the high evolutionary just yet. They just finished one division, so you need a little more time because we've got to find out what happens to um, White Vision. Vision. We have to find yeah, out what happens Vision. to Vision <laughs> and, then, and then what happens uh, to the kids because obviously we heard their voices at the end of one division. So is she going to bring those kids back? Yeah. I don't know. That's going to be something, too, we got to play. We got to play around with for sure. For sure. Uh, uh, let's see. And then one more, and then we'll jump into our announcement here. Mukbang Review says, again, I arrived late. So sorry if this was addressed. Please explain your cool t-shirts. I thought I recognized them, but I was wrong. Yeah. Well, go you, ahead. Go you hadn't talked about your shirt. My shirt? My shirt's yeah. just, I just bought this on Amazon, ladies and gentlemen. I like the design because I'm a big fan of the old school, a new hope movie poster. That was like something out of Frank Franz and the Conan stuff from way back in the eighties. And so to me, this is a, this is my favorite look of the original Star Wars and New Hope. It's sexy and it's cool and I dig it. So when I saw it, I was like, I gotta have this thing. So I went and bought it. Plus, the the material is really nice to wear. It's, it looks know, it's comfortable, it's like soft. Yeah, it's important, right? To have. The, I'm discovering this as I wear is I have more and more guts to wear t-shirts because I hated wearing t-shirts uh, uh, on camera. As I have more Why? and more guts to wear t-shirts. Oh, because, you know, I'm overweight. So it bothers me at times to see myself on screen. Okay. But I like. You're not uh, overweight, but okay. <laughs> all right, all right. I, like, I like shirts that feel good. So um, uh, we'll see uh, there. Uh, but yeah, wh what do you say? Uh, so that's good. Explain the shirt one more time. Wendy, where's it from? Where people might be get, pick it up? This shirt is from her universe. It's uh, a part of her, the new May the 4th lines amongst uh, many other things that they have out right now. But they have... Um, other like Tano style, Soka Tano style shirts. So they have this one that is a, you know, for the ladies and then they have a bunch of unisex stuff. So they have a Tano <laughs> sweatpants that looks really cool. They have a Tano hoodie with an asymmetrical zipper. And then when you puff up the hood, it's got the blue and white marking like Ahsoka's Montreal. So that's really cool. And they got biker shorts if you were looking for like an athletic look. Uh, and then they have some other, I think it's like the, no, it's the Empire um, uh, like a button up, like a woven yeah. button up and it's like neon colored. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's a unisex one as well. So like, there's a lot of stuff right now happening on, uh, her universe because they were dropping things left and right anticipation for star Wars day. There you go. There you go. So get, there you go. Mukbang, get on top of it. Go get some, go pick up that Tano. looks like a Chicago bears, uh, uh NFL Jersey. <laughs> respect it. I respect it. It's awesome. Uh, well let's, I think it's time. We're at the hour mark. It's time to make uh, the big announcement here uh, for the Outlaw Nation uh, show. I don't have any music to play, but uh, um, uh, a few months ago, I started having an idea for the for a show. And I was just kicking it around in my mind, kicking it around in my mind. And I reached out to Wendy Lee and I said, Wendy, I have this idea. What do you think? What do you say? Um, and uh, much to my delight, uh wendy said yes so we are launching a new show that's gonna launch this friday the debut episode will be this friday 3 p.m pt on the outlaw nation channel and i want to play you uh the video for it and give a shout out to the person who created this video for us uh let's take a look <laughs> there you go that's our new show it's called john and wendy explain the world uh and it's not like anything we have here on the outlaw nation channel and wendy please uh what was your process uh on all of this and coming to terms with it and would you want to explain the show to the people who are watching so when roca reached out to me this so i was thinking about like when you said a few months ago i think I think it was last year. <laughs> I honestly think it was 2020. You're probably right. You're probably right. What I'm is sorry, time anymore? What is time anymore? It just took a really long time, not because we were waiting on each other's like answers, but there was right. just a lot of process of to what type of show can we 
bring for all of you guys? Um, what yeah. would set it different than uh, the other shows that's right here on the channel? And yeah. um, like, what would be cool to have on a Friday spot? The time, the topic, the guests, like the guest list is it ran amok. I was like, I think two pages in, I was like, why we, <laughs> we haven't even like, the, we haven't even talked to the graphic designer yet. And we were like, try like, okay, guests, guests. So we're super excited and it's going yeah. to be sort of like a, you know, a review in the, of the week. Yes. Talking about all of our favorite geeky stuff, sometimes not geeky stuff, certain movies. It could be new releases. It could be one that's on Netflix. It could be yeah. current pop culture news, theme park news. You guys know that Roka and I are theme park buddies. We both uh, worked at Universal Studios. I yeah. love going to theme parks um, and also like, you know, trending topics. We all know like Wendy lurks on TikTok every <laughs> week. When I'm not editing, I am lurking on TikTok. So much so, so that I realized that I cannot flip through TikTok if I'm trying to go to sleep because it's endless. You, oh. just, you just scroll, you keep going, and all of a sudden it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what is my life right now? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I've, I've, that's become a hard set rule, like no TikTok before bed. Yeah, we we wanted to do a show that was a lot of fun. We pick out pick out two or three of the big news topics of the week. That's why we're doing it on Friday. But also talk about what's trending on Twitter. Why is it trending on Twitter? What's trending on social media, on Instagram, on TikTok? What are the big social media stories of the week? Get into maybe a little bit of gossip if it relates in some way. And then also, as Wendy said, talk about theme park stuff. And also maybe even do pre-produced packages where we do stuff where we're like Wendy goes off and does something or I go off and do something and then we play it during the show or we both maybe get invited to go do something and we, we do a quick video package that we play on the show. So all of this and we'll bring a we're planning to bring on a guest reviewer once the show kind of gets going every week to talk about whatever's the current film or TV show or even maybe celebrating the anniversary of a film or TV show and getting their points of view. So a lot of that, and it'll be live. Uh, once again, you know, I love doing live shows. Uh, so all of you will be able to participate. It'll be interactive. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, Wendy and I have spent a lot of time hashing out what this, store, what this uh, um, show is going to be. So I hope you all are excited about it. I hope you all like it. Uh, once again, it is called John and Wendy Explain the World. Woo! And yeah, I've been working out a little bit. Wendy looks great. She looks exactly like that. I've had to work out a little bit to match that look. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's the name of the show. And it'll debut this Friday at 3 p.m. PT. And massive shout out to uh, Tushka Productions, one of the Outlaw Nation patrons, Tushka, who did incredible work on that video. Uh, 50 plus hours creating oh that video. We can't thank I'm him so enough. I'm so sorry. We have so many notes. <laughs> we had so many notes for poor Tushka. And we almost broke poor Tushka. But he came through right at the end with our last little bit of notes. Uh, and he did incredible work. Uh, in fact, fuck it. Let's watch it again. I can't I love watch that it. Music. I, I love the music. It was a great pick uh, by Tush. Tushka did everything there uh, in terms of the design. We asked, we told him what we wanted, and we spent some time with the notes and everything like that. So there it is, uh, Wendy Lee. I will absolutely post the teaser on the channel. Ha uh, Haskell, thanks so much. I appreciate the suggestion. And let's see here. We got one from Mukbang who said, "Many congrats on the new show. She's Thank amazing you. and very informative. Both of you are great on camera and have much knowledge." Hashtag gratitude. Hashtag Thank gratitude. You. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. gratitude. The hashtag just reminded me something. Yes. Um, have you watched? Have you watched? Sorry. Have you <laughs> watched a show on Netflix called The Circle? The Circle. Oh, oh yes. God. The reality show where they're yeah. in the building or whatever. Oh my yes. gosh. My current yeah. obsession. Next to my, Shadow and Bone. My girlfriend loves it. Uh, and she watches like the ones from the different countries, like Brazil and all that kind of stuff. It's madness. Absolute it's crazy, madness. crazy because you're living in isolation. It's basically the perfect show to produce during COVID. No, it's a great point. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything is uh, being delivered. You don't have to talk to anybody else. You don't have to worry about it. 
That's true. Uh, and one thing to throw out there, Wendy and I have been friends for a long time and we've always talked about stuff at Collider. We were working there together and then outside Collider as well. We've had many conversations. So this was a natural progression. Uh, and I was very excited uh, that Wendy uh, agreed to be the co my co-host on the show. And we're going to have a blast. Uh, and, uh, and it's a it's definitely a 50-50 venture. So it's going to be a lot of input from both sides trying to hone this thing down and get it good, get it perfect for you all to enjoy every week. So I hope you tune in 3 p.m. PT. Tell everybody about Yay. it. I'll certainly be posting it on social media as well. Uh, uh, Lando says congrats to you both on thank the Thank you. Show. Thank Thanks you. So and much. like big thank you to John for uh, trusting to like picking me as a co-host. I was Please. like, oh my gosh, really? It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Absolutely no-brainer. Thank no -brainer. you so much. I'm so and, excited. And, and Jake, you better get on these. Uh, Jake, you know I'm going to need overlays. You know I'm going to need graphics. So uh, let's get on it, Jake. Jake is I'll like a master. <laughs> He's a I'll master. Send, He's the best. <laughs> I'll send you all the artwork, Jake, so you can get on it. And uh, I might even be reaching out to Team Public or, or where we do T-shirts to start setting up that kind of stuff too. So uh, we'll see. Mukbang Review says, Wendy, John is no joke. He's going to push you more and give you more work than your predecessors. <laughs> be excited to do this. Talk <laughs> what you know and be our amazing co-host. Uh, I, I don't know if I push. Wendy's a pretty hard worker. I, I was going to say, I, I feel yeah. like I pushed John more yes. than anything else when we worked together. I'm like, so where is this? Yeah. It's, Wendy it's, was the best. It's been 10 minutes since I asked you last. Is it not done yet? <laughs> No, I was never that hardcore. <laughs> no, Wendy would be like, hey, can, can I talk to you for a second? Can you come over here and take a look at the schedule? This is what you need to worry about. This is it. You're double booking yourself yet again. This is going to be, you know, and, and Wendy. You can't do this. <laughs> Wendy works so hard. Uh, Jake says he'll consider. Jake, Jake. <laughs> you're my only hope, Jake. There's a May the 4th joke. Um, all right. And let's bring on our producer here, Wendy, uh, Sean Barito. He's yes. going to tell people how they can come in live uh, to, a to ask us questions. Sean, talk to me. Talk to the fans. <gasps> oh! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let, let Sean talk, and I'll come right, right back. John? So, Roka, this is what it sounds and looks like, the one that wow. you make. Um, wow. You got a green one, huh? All right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Jedi. I thought you get the purple one, you know. Oh, here we go. Wow. No, I'm okay. just saying, you connected with, uh, you know, Samuel okay. L. Oh. Wow, okay. Come on. Uh, really? Really? Anyways, so. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Um, my dog is afraid. <laughs> oh. Oh, damn. It's my nice. sofa one. Oh, wow. Look at the hilt. That's you a samurai hilt. That is a samurai hilt, right? Yeah, the it's there? I have the, I have the uh, Vaz Ventress one as well. Oh, Vaz uh, Ventress? Is, oh. Yeah, but this is the one I made. Like, this is the one that the, I made. Um, what do you mean you like, made? You went to the land and made had it made? Yeah, you have. You could make an appointment wow. and you could physically make one yourself. It's wow. a whole they experience. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they put on a whole show for you. It's about like a half hour. You you pick your materials and then you you pick your really? hilts and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a really interesting show. And then at the end, they they physically add this on for you. Wow. And they just and then you pick it up and then and like it runs on double A batteries. So that's why you can oh. hear it. Yeah. And then. Oh. Oh. Oh, and the flash on clash. Nice. The flash on clash. Yeah. Well, it won't work because we're in different places. But yeah. <laughs> but the interesting thing about the new one that yeah. that Wendy was talking about is that uh, I was reading up on it. Basically, how it's going to work is going to like be like a tape measure. That's kind of how they designed it. Like. Oh. Okay. So it's built. It's inside, and it comes out like a tape measure does. So that's basically how it's going to work. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. What technology? Wow. <laughs> the life we live in. Uh, so basically, uh, welcome out, Low Nation, as you were just geeking out. Uh, I don't if have you a have. Rupa, <laughs> do you not have a lightsaber? I do not have a lightsaber. Oh uh, my gosh. Sure. You yeah, got to take you to sure. Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, yes. I'm going to have to get one made, I imagine. Yeah. Well, oh. you have one made, or they, they have uh, the ones that you could just buy. Um, or you can make one. It's totally do you know me at all? Do you know me at all? Anyway. He wants to have his own. I don't well, yeah. it off the shelf, son. I have it made. Well, I, well, you can make one and buy one because I have like three that I bought and this one that I made. Um, so welcome out, Low Nation. If you guys haven't already, please hit the like button. If you have. Uh, <laughs> Smithy. 
That's right, Smithy. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, man. <laughs> and if, you, if you're watching us post, which I know a lot of uh, Outlaw Nature fans do, also hit the like and also uh, leave a comment like John said earlier. It does help uh, raise the visibility of the channel. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to put the link in the Discord. So if you're a member of the Outlaw Nation Patreon, and if you're not, why not? John has hangouts with us and we're... And we have a lot of good times, a lot of hate, late night watching movies and anime and stuff like that. We the do Discord fun stuff on the Patreon. Discord is hopping, ladies and gentlemen. The Absolutely. Is hopping. People are on till 2 a.m., 4 a.m., watching movies, talking about life, discussing the world, helping me train for the Schmodown. I'm telling you, this is the Discord. The Outlaw Nation Discord is maybe one of the most proudest things I have ever been a part of. And so it, it's incredible to hear how many people are enjoying it. It is a place of no toxicity and friendship so uh, please yeah, if absolutely. you're not if you're not a member of the patreon become a member of the patreon so you can come hang out in the discord with the great people involved in the outlaw nation please i can't recommend it enough yeah we're uh, even doing fan ma matches as well uh trivia matches so those are fun uh we had a harry potter run we're doing a cool running one as well so we, a lot of great stuff we're doing there so uh yeah. if you're ten dollar and above patreon level you get the link as you guys know always the patrons come first so when you click on the link it will bring you into stream yards uh, it will ask you to verify your headphone and your microphone. Please at least try to have headphones. Otherwise, can, uh, we can get an echo and it'll be a little bit distorting. And I'll bring you into backstage and John will be able to see you. And yeah. then he can bring you in at any time to try have at least one question ready because we don't have a lot of time left with Wendy. Uh, so yeah. we can get through as many people as we possibly can to ask Wendy and John any questions or comments that you guys have. Tito says, how do I get onto the Discord? I'm a member of the Outlaw Nation Patreon. Yeah, Sean, how do they do that? Uh, so basically on Patreon, it should be a way to link your Patreon membership to the Discord, and then that will give you the link to come in. So that should still be an option on the Patreon website. So that is a way to get in. Otherwise, um, you could just hit up John directly through Patreon. He could send yeah. you a link to the Discord uh, so they can get in, James. Absolutely. Please do so, Tito. Come on in. Help me study for the showdown. No spies. No Ben Baker, or Dan Merle, <laughs> or, uh, you know, stars or uh, uh, quirky Merc spies. No spies. Come in and help us how train. Does, how does one fun. study for the Schmodown? Like, what's oh, the process? Wow. Oh, man. Wendy, uh, this year, the Outlaw, I don't want to give away too much. I don't want people to know the strategy or whatever, but the Outlaw Nation has been incredible at uh, quizzing me, writing questions based on the wheel slices and coming up with questions for me That's and training so me, good. it's incredible. And some of the movies I haven't seen, just getting the basic information down helps in case uh, it, it comes up in the first or second round of the Shmodown. So it, it's pretty fantastic work that they've done, and I'm very honored that they've taken uh, the amount of time that they've taken uh, to get me ready for this year. And it's so you know, when so you far, win, they win. Yeah, basically yes. And so far, I've started out the year with one two is that correct one yeah two two uh tkos was we yes. just had with uh with uh kim uh, sorry with lightning liz janet miller and then uh the the the, the, the tag team room. match against the press room against perry and josh horowitz uh two tkos i and i've rarely if ever had tkos in my career to start out the year with two kind of bodes well with the work we're doing there on the outlaw nation patreon so they've been incredible and of course I can't discount the Finstock Exchange faction mates as well, who've also got me prepared. So I spent a lot of time studying trivia, Wendy Lee. A lot nice. of time. A lot of time. Nice. Ugh. Amazing. Yeah, basically, <laughs> that's absolutely what we're going to go to Orange style with the training. That's correct. It's just that, dripping the eyes and then scanning oh. the questions. Uh, uh, Jason, what do you want me to write down? There's nothing to write down. Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> There's nothing for me to write down. Do you have a question um, for Wendy, Sean? I, I do, of course. Yeah, so uh, with the with the Marvel stuff that came out, um, obviously they were focusing on the movies, and I'm excited to go back because I personally haven't been to the movie since last year to see Tenet. And that yeah. was a weird experience because there's only like three people in the theater at the time. <laughs> uh, so I, I think the first, my first movie back uh, will be Black Widow. I'm going oh, yeah. to make that my July first night. movie go back in. But okay. I'm just curious about, uh, they didn't mention anything about the Disney Plus shows. Like, what are those going to look like going forward? I know they're starting to shoot uh, She-Hulk and um, mm. they're, they're, they're pretty much almost done with Miss Marvel and Hawkeye and things like that. But I was yeah. curious, what Disney Plus Marvel show are you most excited about like other that as other the two that have come out or the ones that are coming up oh that's a great question i would say 
Miss Marvel because I felt that mm. she is so underrated. Mm. Um, especially if you don't read the comic books, you or even play the video game, like you may not even know that there is a Miss Miss Marvel. Right, so the right. fact that they're gonna tie her into the films and she's getting her own Disney Plus show is really awesome. And uh, I would say, and this one, I don't think it's ever been like properly announced. And right now, it's just kind of in its like working stages in progress. But I believe I hear that they're going to, to also do a show based on or in Wakanda. Yes, yes. that's correct. And that yep. would be the one. I need more Dora, Mal Dora Milaje in my life. I need more <laughs> Ayo. I need more Okoye. I need them all. Yeah. You can just call it Dora Milaje. Don't worry about anything else. Yeah, really, you could just get away with that. You're it could be them doing right. anything. They can get coffee or they can fight people. I'll mm -hmm. watch it all. <laughs> <laughs> or get coffee and fight people at the same time. They can Why do whatever not? they want. They, can, yeah, oh they, have, God, they have jurisdiction yeah. anywhere. And they and got, anywhere. Wherever they're Any at. Starbucks. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, for me, it's Moon Knight. It's always going to be Moon Knight. Um, you know, I've got like 10 Moon Knight graphic novels. I uh, effing love Moon Knight. So, ha and also them casting Oscar Isaac, a Latino actor to play the lead makes me even more excited. So I'm just, I'm, I'm so curious about how they're going to present Moon Knight and what his origin story is going to be. Because Marvel has a great track record of rearranging some of the facts in an origin story and making them work for the overall universe of the MCU that they've created on screen uh, or on the uh, Disney Plus shows that have come out. So I'm excited and I'm curious to see what they're going to do with his origin story and how they're going to make it work in the MCU. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, Moon Knight versus Doctor Strange, you know, it, that's that's a battle for the ages. Like, plus, <laughs> Doctor Fate is I mean, sorry, uh, not Doctor Fate, that's DC, but like just having the, 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 the mystical stuff going on with Wanda, yes. Doctor Strange, yeah. Moon Knight. I mean, there's so much happening that I'm excited. Like, are we sure. finally going to get a Mephisto? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll keep waiting. 2023, Mephisto. You can oh, still show up. Somebody make that can show up. You can still show up. <laughs> That's at some point. Is that the um, All right. I think mine is Hawkeye. Yeah. Um, only okay. because like it's the show, soon. the two shows that have, uh, have come out this year, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier and and WandaVision have done yeah. a great job of of giving us more backstory to these characters that we've seen in these mm. movies. Yeah. Um, and I I think uh, Jen Renner and the, and the character Hawkeye have been. Put on the back burner, especially in the first Avengers movie, he's basically hypnotized for almost the majority of it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm glad to see him get his own show. Hopefully, it's like ten episodes at least, um, and then we get a lot more of his history. We got maybe hopefully get some flashbacks of him as Ronan. Maybe the the um, maybe with him and um, Black Widow, mm -hmm. the um, the Budapest. Maybe we actually finally finally figure out what Budapest oh, means. Yeah, like, so right. I'm just really curious to see like him. Where where we see, what we see from him, and obviously they're going to introduce Kate Bishop. What we see of both of them, and where does Hawkeye go moving forward? Because obviously we know she's going to take the mantle. But what where does that leave him? Does he die? Does he retire? What does he actually do? So yeah. I'm really fascinated going forward to see that show. Okay, I like that idea. I mean, because Jeremy Iron, I'm sorry, J Jeremy Renner has never got a chair. Irons. Jeremy Renner has never <laughs> got a chance to kind of, he's never going to get a chance to lead his own movie. So oh, this yeah. is kind of a way of solving that a little bit. But of course, he's handing the mantle off to Kate Bishop, to Haley Steinfeld. So in a way, it's him saying goodbye to the character uh, mm. as well. So it'll be, a, I think it'll be a great series. And if it's based on the Matt Fraction thing, which everyone says it is, uh, that makes me even more excited to see what we're going to get uh from this and don't forget ronan though he could be done with hawkeye but ronan is still that's a possibility true. yeah right absolutely um, that's true i actually forgot about that especially if dealing with shang chi because shang chi is happening before during and after the blip so will he run into ronan will we see ronan hawkeye do ronan in shang chi i'd be curious to see like a scene with them that would be kind of badass so we'll see uh yeah. all right sean thanks buddy Appreciate it. Any other final words? Oh, yes. Just this. Yes. Just yes. This. One of the right. best sounds in the world. Absolutely. You could just like have this like going all night. Yeah. Go to sleep to it. Oh, so good. <laughs> all right, Sean. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know how you go to sleep to that. Uh, all right, let's bring in Brennan, who's been waiting to come on. Brennan, what's up, bud? Hey, may the fourth be with you. Hi, Wendy. Hello. May the fourth be with you. I've been a fan of yours since the old collider days. Oh my gosh, thank you. And Roka's as well. 
No, thank you. It's always good to see you, brother man. How are you feeling? How, are you, how you, especially a very big Star Wars fan, how are you feeling today on May the 4th, a day well, to celebrate the franchise? I'm really excited because my sister in law just had twins. Oh, congrats. Congratulations. congratulations. Earlier today. They are not named Luke and Leia. <laughs> Though my, my, uh, her brother, my sister in law. <laughs> My sister-in-law's brother lobbied for that. Oh, no way. Yeah, They were born today, earlier this afternoon. Wow. They're all okay. good, boy and a girl. Oh, my God. That's I'm awesome, waiting, dude. I'm waiting to get the official names. Okay. What if it is Luke and Leia? <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be yeah. awesome. What if it's Embrace Ray it. Kylo? Oh, Embrace no. it. Mm, Ray yeah. and Kylo. Mm, <laughs> <no. laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so, so, uh, what's Bad up, brother? Batch was great. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I just got the names of the the twins. Oh, okay. Oh, it's like they. It's Sam like they know. Breaking Sam news. Samuel and Renee. Oh, good name. Samuel and Renee. You gotta say those are good names. Those are good names. And, uh, I like it. It's Samuel James. This is middle James. His middle name after. My grandpa just passed away last year. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And then Renee Eleanor. Eleanor spelled like Sam Gamgee's daughter in the Lord of the Rings books. Oh, oh my gosh. E -L -A -N -R. I love that. Nice. I love so yeah, that. We just got that. So Bad Batch was great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Omega is a great character and a great addition to the team. Yes. And also, I was thinking about the name. Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Yes. So is she the last clone? That's what I'm wondering. Is she the last uh, clone? It's possible. I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but on production. Uh, yeah, possibly. Possibly. I, think I didn't even think about that. Like the last one. It can go I didn't one of two about ways. The name. Yeah. But it's interesting oh. that uh, that it sounds like they took. Jango Fett's DNA and manipulated it mm. into a female clone. <gasps> I'm assuming that's what happened. Mm. Oh. And I think it's really cool. And she was a great addition to the team. Yes. The chemistry she had with those guys. I like her a lot. I want to see love, more of her. And I love, you know, particularly Wrecker. He cracks me up. Oh, yeah. Right. Bre right. He's my he's, id come to life. Wrecker is my id come to life. I was thinking of you. Oh, <laughs> of you but I think it's interesting that Crosshair is the, <laughs> is the choice for the villain. Wait, don't spoil stuff, Brennan. People haven't seen it yet. Brennan's the day of. Oops. <laughs> I think we're okay. You get one spoiler. That's it, Brennan. All right, go I ahead. think we're yes. okay. Whoopsie, shame on me. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Anyhow, but I like Crosshair because he reminds me of... Uh, the one samurai from Seven Samurai, the um, the the swordsman. The oh, yeah, quiet guy's got a long face. Yes, yes, that's your oh. question. What do you think of that? Man? He is like the more quiet, you know, he's plays the sniper in the group. Yeah, so he's always it's it's interesting to watch them fight. How you kind of bring up. Um, you know, crosshair and like the samurai comparison mm. where there is not saying that there isn't teamwork, but he's not on the field with them. He's a little bit more support because mm -hmm. he's, you know, called crosshair for a reason, doesn't miss. So, right. yeah, I always like to see the four and then somewhere in the bushes and <laughs> the trees is hiding. What and it's to the chat if I gave anything away. No, no, it's all right. And, and uh, even, um, but, he, but Crosshair is the one that says, and this is not a spoiler, but it says to um, to Hunter, like you, you know, you never see the big picture, and it's like, yeah, because I'm in, I'm actually in the fight. You're on the outside seeing the big picture. I'm actually down mm. on the ground doing what I yeah. need to do to succeed. So it's that it, it's two points of views on how to succeed in a mission and how to lead a team. So that comes into the uh, a conflict uh, throughout the show. So yeah. Fair point to bring up for sure, but brother, man. What a great show. What a great yes. debut. You know, so much great stuff that I won't spoil. <laughs> but, I'm um, ready for the next I, episode this Friday. I'm so excited because, I mean, honestly, this Dave Filoni knows his stuff. Yes, he does. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I've enjoyed all the new Star Wars content. But I think particularly, I think, mm -hmm. when he's sort of the guy... Yeah, the quality of 
of sort of that long form storytelling is really great. Yeah, agreed. Uh, and there were four people involved in this particular episode. So I wonder if those are the same four people mm -hmm. involved throughout. Filoni was only one of four. So I, I like that there's not just his voice. There are other voices involved here as well to make sure it's a more fleshed out story for that story they're trying to tell. So certainly mm -hmm. that's cool mm -hmm. stuff. Awesome. Well, yeah. happy Star Wars Day. May the fourth be with you. You too. You too. And Thank you. See you later. Thanks, Brennan. Appreciate it. All right, let's bring in uh, Chris. He is coming to us uh, from uh, lovely Scotland. It Whoa. is what uh, four? It is four thirty in the morning. Is that correct, Chris? Oh uh, my! Three thirty. Three thirty. Oh, okay. Jesus. Yeah. All right. Yes, please break it. No, uh, no, uh, thanks no, for staying no, up. No, not too late. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Good to try there. What's All going right. on? Ah, not much. Wendy, I'm just going something to see behind you on, I think it's to your right. No, other side. Is that Betrayal at House on the Hill? It sure is. Wow. Hey. Oh. This is a hard, it's a hard game. I don't think we survived the last time. It's a nice little board game. Oh, oh Betrayal at Boulder's Gate. Wait, I didn't know they made that. Yep. Oh, wait, I got to show that to Dustin. Boulder's Gate, like D&D? &D? Yeah. Oh. Wow. I'm yeah, going to go brilliant. on Amazon and buy it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> which, That's awesome. Which kind of brings me into my question. I was going to ask, how okay. did you, so how did you kind of get into board gaming and D&D &D and stuff? Like, what's your history there? So with board gaming, um, I was really introduced to different board games, such as the ones you see behind me in my college years, because like, they're like, my roommates wanted to have a game night and I, they said they were going to play board games. And I thought, okay, that sounds boring. Like, what are you going to play Monopoly? I don't know. <laughs> They're like, no, we don't play that kind of game. They pulled out because I was joining for the first time. So they pulled out uh, munchkins to kind of get me started. And then it oh. was like Ninja burger. And it was like, you know, they kind of slowly worked me into mm -hmm. now what you see behind me, which is there are so many more options. And then from there, they're the same group that introduced me to um, EverQuest and oh, nice. World of Warcraft, and then uh, D and D, and there was a group of um, a, like a, a LARP group on campus, and I was like, "What? Is, what's that? What do you guys do?" And they, you know, had their like foamy weapons that because you can't have real ones yeah. um, run around the campus, and they do this, and I like thought about it, like you know, kind of wanted to join, but it was just like too much, and then the campus <laughs> security was always like, "Well, you can't really do that," and we're like, "All right." So then it was D and D, and they first handed me this like player's handbook i'm like yeah no i'm out because it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a like, bit yeah, it's it's like a, yeah it reads like a textbook and i'm like <laughs> yeah no but then i was listening to them play this like one shot campaign i'm like wait they're having so much fun i so i just like pretended i was in the living room like my laptop doing work <laughs> over <laughs> They're like, do you want to join next week? I'm like, yeah, 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 I do. I'll help me make a character. They're like, it's like Word of Warcraft. I'm like, if you set that from the beginning instead of handing me that book, yeah, it's I'd be sitting daunting. there right now. So that's yeah, kind of how it uh, evolved. And then my husband, Dustin, is really, really into um, all types of TTRPG. So with his help, and he DMs a, game, a home game that we play. So it's really help enhance my love for it more. That's awesome. Um, I have no experience in it, Chris, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> we'll, 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 get, we'll get you one shot in the Discord, man. I'll, yeah. All right. yes. I'll, I'll, yes. I'll DM for you. <gasps> do, I ha do I have to buy die? Do I have to buy like 20 sided? Oh, no, 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 no. You can oh, okay. integrated right. roller, or you can sign right, up for good. roll 20. Good, that, good. Uh, I think Wendy mentioned roll 20 earlier on. Mm -hmm. okay. What I want to ask him, I want to ask who, uh, what is your favorite uh, race in class nope. to play? See, I'm not much of a D&D &D fan. I'm more into other stuff. The first, my first one was a game called... Or favorite board uh, game. Deadlands. Uh, favorite board game, <laughs> terribly at the moment. Not one you want to mention, Pandemic. Oh, my God. Wait, <laughs> where is mine? Yeah, you know, that's like one of the hardest games to beat. Yeah, yeah. We've never beaten it. Well, we beat it once on the easiest setting. I can't take it out because it's underneath a bunch of stuff. But we, <laughs> we actually, we did, as a, as a good joke to ourselves, we bought it during the pandemic to play. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's I'll not say, a game wait, wait, explain it to someone who is not a a board game player. What is the concept of Pandemic? Obviously, I don't know by the title, but what are you trying to beat when you're playing a game called Pandemic? Uh, do you want to take this one, or do you want to? No, I, I want to hear someone else explain it because I'm not good at it. <laughs> so, so basically, you all take on the different roles. Like, uh, I think you've got scientist. We've got one who we call Living Jesus. 
who can cure any plague that they can. And basically what happens is you set up these wee cubes on the board and each one infects a represents a virus that's infecting an individual part of the world. Oh. And each turn they they kind of spread to different cities. And your right. job is you're playing the scientist trying to get around the world, trying to cure all these different diseases and wipe them Interesting. out. Interesting. Okay. And it's so really and what you get and you can so what you're saying is every time you die before you can cure the diseases around <laughs> Pretty the much, world. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. You can play in, yeah, you can play in different modes. There's like I think you can play with two two there oh, in fact that would just get complicated if I try and explain <laughs> the, the I play cards. with one I play with one of the one of the virus or disease cards. Uh, epidemic. Yeah, I was like, I, yeah. I can't do it. Because the first time we opened it, I was like, Well, I just spent money on this game that we lost in 20 minutes. I've never lost a game in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad. It's like you eradicate this shit. <laughs> You're fucking yeah. dead. What the crap? What the yeah, crap? Yeah, my, my mate plays it like Winston Churchill. He's standing over the board like a like an army commander, <laughs> telling us all what to do. <laughs> it's brilliant. That's genius. That is genius. Uh, that's awesome, Chris. All right, any other questions, brother man? Any? Uh, no, that's else? it. I'll let other someone else get on and won't take okay. up too much more of your time. No, no, no. Thank, thank you, much, Chris. Thank you. thank you so much. Thanks for staying up with us, brother. Appreciate it, man. Brother. When you get it. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Gotta buy it. Right on, right on. I don't, and I'll, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm. I had no idea the Outlaw Nation people were into D and D. None of them ever mentioned it. So you were sleeping uh, on it, man. Yeah, I'm sleeping on the it. The best right. people in the world. All right. Okay, I'm gonna jump into it. We'll see. Oh my god, this is my girlfriend doesn't doesn't think I'm a nerd enough. All right, let's. <laughs> Smithy, what's up, bud? Hey. Salute. How are you two doing this evening? Good. How are so you? Good. Hi. Happy what's going May, on? May the fourth. Um, too. I'm getting into the holiday spirit here. That's my <laughs> thing. I think it was pretty good. Yoda's like in the it. background. He, as long as Yoda's there, it means it's legit. He looks upset, nice. but yeah, I like it. Yeah. Well, I'm insulting the image of Princess Leia big time. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> hey, what are you wearing there? This hat. I have this. I always want to share. It's the worst looking hat, but the theme uh -huh. of this hat is Star Wars faces. With people reflecting in the eyes, right? Oh, so there's wow. that. Okay. And then that there's like badass. that. It's pretty oh, terrible. Yeah. What the heck? That's cool. That from a new hope? You have, oh, oh my god. god. And one of my personal favorites <laughs> is they gotta get Greedo <laughs> in there. And Han. Yeah. That's actually really cool. So, I would wow. I would wear that. I mean, it's just one of those bad shaped hats that makes you look like you have a cone head that you're kind of like smashing down. It's a little hot. <laughs> oh my God. So, that's that's so a funny. lot for one hat. Jesus. It's a busy hat. Yeah, it and is. this is the day to wear it. But, you know, I saw the, the tagline of your show is like hmm. Bad Batch discussion with Wendy Lee. And I, I hear now there's no spoilers, but I see yeah. you guys have both seen it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of course, of course, of uh, course. But whew. I don't want to spoil anything because people—it's still twenty-four hours. I know uh, within the twenty-four hours. So, wh what did you think about it? Did you get a chance to watch it? Did you like it? I have not finished it because oh, I finished so, uh, work today, and instead of watching you, I crammed in like the first hour, and uh, I paused it, and now I'm here. So, oh, you thank you, thank you. But I love it, and without spoilers, you can just say that it's in the vein of the Clone Wars, you know. Sure. And so, oh, if you're yeah. like. I'm a fan of all the animated shows. I will even watch Resistance, wow. which most people don't even want to talk about that show. They're just <laughs> like, it didn't exist and blah, blah, blah. But uh, so I think it's fantastic so far. And I'm really excited to see where it goes. But anyway. Agreed. Did you watch, uh, um, you know, Laura, Laura Kelly and I revisited Tartofsky's Clone Wars. Have you revisited that on HBO Max? Oh, sorry, on Disney Plus. On Disney Plus. You know, the other day I turned it on after I finished yeah. the second Ewok movie. I've watched oh. both the Ewok movies now. Wendy's laughing because she loves them so much. What? <laughs> I haven't no, watched them yet. I'm sorry. They're so cute. They are fun. No, and they're actually really good because you don't expect them to be as big budget as they are, and they have a lot yeah. of big effects. And you're like, that's what Star Wars is. It's like a mm -hmm. bunch of cool effects. So, um, um. But my question for Wendy, since we mm. can't talk spoilers for the new episode. Yeah. How did you react when Ahsoka had to leave the Jedi Order behind? How did you oh, respond to that whole thing? Because I know you're a huge Ahsoka fan. I am. You're hitting it on the nose. Uh, Don't let I... me make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been a couple of years. I think I've come to terms with it. Um, yeah, at first, I, I felt sad that she felt like this was no longer a place that she felt like she could belong or trust 
the people, but I 100% agree with that decision. Nobody was behind her for for this. And yeah. they basically, I felt like they didn't do any sort of research. Like, now she did it, lynch her. And it's like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hold with on. the judgment there. Yeah. And, and also to see, like, the betrayal there and that mm -hmm. she even turned to Ventress to kind of team up. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. I was like, what the heck is happening right now? I think, though, the best moment of that that episode, the end, was when she took off her Padawan braid and when Anakin asked her to return, she gave it to him mm, and then she yeah. just walked off and then it went to credit and it was silent and that spoke mm. louder than anything else that they, that was said in the entire episode and I was happy for her. I was like, you know what? You don't mm -hmm. need them. You yeah. don't need them. Well, the other option was for her to be on the slate to be killed, basically. So that mm. saved her. That whole plot line was about how do we get her off the show without her dying in Order 66 and all that kind of stuff? Exactly. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Let me ask you a question, Smith. Let me turn around on you. Do you think Ahsoka leaving is another or is a massive reason that Anakin turned to the dark side? Do you think if Ahsoka mm -hmm. had been there, she would have stopped him? She could have talked him down. She could have talked him out of it. Exactly, yes. Uh, yeah, what do you think would have happened if Ahsoka had stayed, especially during the romance with him and, and Padme? Right. Would she have been able to stop that from, uh, from stop him from going dark, do you think? I think, uh, yeah, she could have definitely been there to stop him. And she mm -hmm. did face him in Rebels, right. and they had their mm -hmm. moment. That's great. But I, I think that um, a lot of what the Clone Wars show was about was George Lucas not necessarily in a positive way, but almost being like, fine, you rip on me for what I did in the prequels. Let's fix certain things. And I think that Ahsoka's relationship with him was a way of fixing the kind of, it was a little bit weak uh, at the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith. I actually expected mm. Padme to be killed and right. that that's what would make him go to the dark side. I was always surprised they didn't figure out a way to do that. Right, right. Um, but there's complications. Like then the kids would have had to have been born without him knowing about it or something. Right. 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 Yeah. So, um, but I do agree. And I think, uh, you know, I don't know if he would have not gone to the dark side if she was still in the story, but it definitely would have been a, a bigger fight. Mm -hmm. I suggested once in a chat that they should digitally insert Ahsoka into the Revenge of the Sith fight scene. <laughs> <laughs> where they're fighting on Mustafar and just like Lucas would do that, right? Just put her in there digitally, you know. Java and all going the by response well. was, "You're <laughs> terrible. We hate you. You live in your mother's basement. That kind of stuff, you know." So, yeah. anyway. Oh boy, <laughs> it's bad when other people who live in their mother's basement come after you for living in your mother's basement. That's terrible. I don't live in my mother's basement. <laughs> I know you I live in my mother's oh, no. guest bedroom, hey and she makes me a sandwich every day so shut like up I'm, I'm jealous i'm jealous i appreciate that <laughs> no i'm kidding i don't uh, in my parents house anyway <laughs> amazing all right all thanks right. smithy great to see well, you good man. to see you again wendy and good later roca fat yeah much love brother all much right love. um all right i hesitate to bring this person on but we're gonna see what kind of madness he's gonna bring to the show it's been a while since i've seen my brother uh, but uh, from what I can tell, he's looking nice and bearded. Jake Yacovetta, look at that hey, thing. Oh. Holy mackerel. Hey, Wendy. The last time I saw you, you didn't have that. Look at that. No, I, I didn't. Uh, but it was a long yeah. time ago, too. COVID's a motherfucker. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Who are you? Look at that thing. I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Yeah, John, you can just stop. We're okay, talking. I will. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> But bring people together. I'm out. Yep. Go ahead. No, it's great to see you, Wendy. Good to Thank see you too, you. John. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, y'all are some nerds. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I did have. I, I just had a couple things. Um, is it raining? Yes. Oh, now, okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like pissing on myself. No, no. I just didn't know if the hey, shower. Where are was you? On. You're not in L.A. I thought you were L.A. No, nah, I'm in. Well, I am. I'm in Lower Alabama. Ah, uh, I like that. <laughs> that good old, yeah, no, it, good old southern uh, thunderstorm that we don't get over here. I like that. It's more yeah, it, than fake. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I love you too, Chris. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I. I just. Had a couple things. Uh, okay, Brennan 
Brennan was talking about the the twins that were being born and they weren't named Luke and Leia, <laughs> but I was just at the first meetup that I've had with anybody in a year and a half. Wow. And like Rachel Silvestrini, Chance Ellison, Andrew D. Milana, Jader Paramo, like everybody was there. And we went to a wedding in Orlando mm, that Andrew right, right, right. Uh, filmed it. Cool. And it was Star Wars themed. And so I have this. Oh! Oh! Rucka, we got to get your lightsaber. You can't be I, the only. You I, can't be uh, the only one without. I'm have to low key keep it behind the bookcase or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is happening? What is what is happening? Roka, do we have oh, to get shit, a fund up, to, together to uh, to help you get one of these? Is that what has to happen now? <laughs> what, what is going on? Is, is that oh, what has to God. happen? What? Say I'm just again. saying. We're gonna let's peer pressure him into getting one. <laughs> Absolutely. When Disneyland uh, opens up proper, go yeah. and get it. <laughs> Come on, Roka. We got a uh, field trip. Field trip uh, for, for the LL Nation. I guess so. I guess so. Maybe I'm that'll down. be one of the pre produced things we do for our show. Uh, me going to get a lightsaber. That'd be actually kind of fun to do for yeah, our show and talk about it. You have what to take a like. side trip and be the uh, train conductor at the Wizarding <laughs> World. <laughs> it's, they're not going to do. The train conductor at fucking Disney. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> just do it anyways. Just find any train. They have the train that and goes on the outside. Train, just stand in front of it. And just Welcome do your monologue. Platform. Going to free call us. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I, I saw that video from late to the party. <laughs> that was great. They found you. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did find me. That was a lot of fun. Amazing. Is this right? All right. Uh, this uh, <laughs> Jesus. That's how you do it. Uh, my, I actually had a point with that, right. and it just went. <laughs> there you go. Make the noise. Making your own sound effect. Yeah. This count. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Oh, it makes sound. Oh, that's cool. That's oh, you have an app. Yeah. That, that, that's that's cute. <laughs> there you go. There, there you go. go. Nerd. <laughs> You can put it on your Amazon <laughs> wish list, uh, the, the lightsaber. <laughs> put that on your Amazon wish list. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. What else you got, Jake? Uh, well, my whole point leading into that was uh -huh. that uh, they didn't name the kids Luke and Leia, but at the wedding, it was a whole Star Wars themed wedding. Oh, And wow. there was a brother and sister that was a ring bearer and flower girl that word named luke and leia oh how appropriate and that's awesome the flower that's girls cool. like their dresses like there was a ray and there was jen and there was uh leia like the whole thing was was star wars it was fucking that's dope so cute that's awesome yeah that's so cute <laughs> oh <my God>. no. <laughs> He's not gonna stop. <laughs> Roka, you get, like Swing Kid says, you gotta build your first what, lightsaber at Galaxy's what, Edge. Yeah. yeah. What did I? What did I start? I'm bum, sorry. Bum, bada, bum, bum, bada, bum. <laughs> Put it away. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the ad. Now I got an ad for Bitcoin on my fucking phone. God damn it! <laughs> you some Dogecoin, some Doge. Yeah, Doge. Oh my god. We should have listened when well, we'd be rich right now. I know. Anyway, I know. go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well, I agree with Cheryl. Also, just stop, John. Just stop. Just, yeah. You know what, yeah. Cheryl? You, you know what, nerd? You be quiet. <laughs> well, you you also said something about uh spies for Action Army and the rock stars. Um I, I didn't say action army. I did not I'm mention action army. Absolutely not a spy <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Wait, you don't you don't gotta spy on me for the world girls. They're 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 kicking ass. They're doing I should spy on them. They're kicking they're ass. They're doing really great. Yeah. I don't sell calendars right. here. <laughs> Their merch is top I, notch. It is? I, yeah. I will not buy a Roka calendar if it's Come on. Like the World Girls one. I'll, I'll shoot my butt. 
Uh, <laughs> please. On, a, on a rubber duck. Yeah, put my butt on a rubber duck. Pass. Well, I actually yeah. thought about that the other day. I thought about taking a nude picture of myself, putting it on Instagram, just covering my joke? covering my or... balls and just say, like, I, I don't get to pose in a bikini, but I'm, I'm still proud of my body. I'm still I'm, proud I mean, of my you body. should be proud of your body, but I'm also proud of your body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how that's going to work for your brand, Broke, if you do something like that. so My brand? Uh, my brand is the outlaw. That makes sense, doesn't it? I don't follow the rules. I put my balls on Instagram. I don't know any outlaws with a fucking OnlyFans page. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do not Bullshit. start one. Or, I mean, do start one if you want. But Yeah, people have one. It's really interesting to hear that people have outlaw. Have a, sorry, have an OnlyFans page. <laughs> your outlaw nation card's been revoked twice now. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Cheryl. Cheryl shows up five minutes <laughs> left in the show to say something. That's hilarious. <laughs> Cheryl, if you've been here the whole time, maybe I'll be listening to you. Uh, wow. Anyway. Well, I did, I did <laughs> have a question yes. for Wendy, all right. though. All, all, right. I'll all, drop, that I'll other, drop Sean out. All the other shit aside. I'll drop you out, Sean. All right. Go <laughs> ahead, Sean. What's your question? And, man, why, you didn't have to drop Sean. Sean's the dude. Answer your question. But, okay. Did you just give me an order? Answer the question. I got Tito Lavario waiting on behind you. I got James Lavario. I can't coming. answer the question. Oh, I'm ask asking. the question. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay Wendy. Would you, yes, rather, would you rather get 10,000 followers overnight for the movie couple or go through Killer, Crown, Killer Clowns from Outer Space at Halloween Horror Nights for two weeks straight? I would pick the first option. I don't want to do that 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 maze ever again. If it wasn't for Josh McCuga, I don't know if I would have made it because that man who was also afraid of everything pulled yeah. me through that maze. He opened his eyes and he's like, "Let's go, Wendy. Come on!" Like I watched back the video, he came back because I like somehow let go of his hand. I was like, "No," and I wanted to go and hide in a corner. What good was what, what good was that gonna do? And he came back and got me. He's like, let's go this way. I'm like, ah. <laughs> and then, then Roxy laughed at you Wendy. <laughs> before she realized Wendy. it. She didn't know. She didn't know. Yeah. Oh, She's that was a, you know, I'll, I, it was I would a great do it again video. for fun. I would do it again for, for fun, but maybe a different maze. Not the, not with no clowns in it. <laughs> okay. That's no fair. clowns wow. in it. Yeah. That's don't like clowns, man. The clowns can follow me, all 10,000 of them, at the movie couple. That I'd be okay with. <laughs> the killer clowns. That's Most what I should have done. Make it huh? just wearing my Stetson hat. Absolutely. Is that the, cal oh, God, is that the calendar? No. That would have been a perfect calendar. God, no. Just riding the horse with no, 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 just my spurs I, on. I, I feel like you need to just kick me out of the stream at this point. Assless chaps. That's I, what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, no, no. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, no, no. Jake, am I getting an overlay? Am I getting an overlay Wendy, for a new show? You, I'll, I'll consider it. Come on, Jake. I'll do it for Wendy. I'm, I won't do uh, it for you. Thank you're you, losing points you. with the with your calendar pitch. Uh, thank you. Roca. I appreciate it, Jake. You're very kind. I might, Thanks, I might throw in some calendar picks myself, though. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I should see Jake laying out like Burt Reynolds. I love it. I'm down with it. Oh, my Wait, goodness. Uh, what? you never seen Burt Reynolds and his Playgirl? No, you, you want to see that? <laughs> Wait, don't show it to the stream. I don't think you can. The TOS. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can. He's not I can go ahead and start <laughs> getting there. He's not nude, nude. Are you going to start taking off your clothes? I, I have been on stream. I'll there just say go. that. Oh. There it is. That's his pose. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there you go. Take it down. Oh, take no, it down before YouTube takes you down. There you that's, go. That's Stagnino. That ain't, that ain't me. <laughs> You say that with respect. You talk about my manager. So did it say Cosmopolitan? <laughs> yes. Like in a Cosmo magazine? I think it was a Cosmopolitan. Was that what it was in? Oh, it was a Cosmopolitan, not Playgirl. There you go. Interesting. Did you just I, tell me to give Dang no respect? Cosmo's very different today. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. That was the 70s. That was the 70s. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anything else, Jake? We got Tito waiting to come in. We got a no, bunch of super it, shows to get through. That's it. I, I just All right. love you, Wendy. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Great to see you. Good to see you. John, yes. you're you. That's true. Thank <laughs> you very much, Jake. Good to see you, brother. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Later, Appreciate yeah. it, man. 
Thanks, Jake Yacoveta. Does uh, all, almost all the overlays for the Outlaw Nation uh, channel and does Amongst the Outlaw 50 Nation. 50 million other things. For, yeah, yeah, I know. He does. Yeah. He does. He loves it here. Uh, all right, let's bring on Tito. Tito, what's going on, dude? Good to see hey. you, James Lavario. Everybody's got hello, hello, hello. Like, a, like a mighty beard, like Thor beard. I know. It's great. I can't yeah. grow anything, so. It's been over a year since I've shaved. So. <laughs> Pandemic beard is real. He's looking yeah. like Terrence Slattery. He looks like the Mandarin right now from Iron Man 3. But anyway, yeah, go on. You'll never see me coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, finally we got on here. I've been trying to get on your Discord for the past couple of months. I don't know what, what the really? issue was. Yeah, I don't know what the issue was. I couldn't Did get it. Did you finally but, get on? Yeah, they, well, I mean, I'm here. But uh, yeah, yes. the, all your uh, Outlaw Nation people helped me get on here. So thanks, everybody, again. Uh, nice. Drunken Prayer and... I don't remember who else was on there, but yeah, thanks Aww. guys. I appreciate it. Um, awesome. So yeah, like I said, I've been wanting to come on here and chat with you live. Um, yeah. I, mean, I catch the stereo shows when, um, of the MCU rewatch. Usually I, I try to like leave a comment live and then I'll go back and listen to the replay later. Appreciate that. Thank usually you. Usually working. I have a, two jobs. I work from home on the second job, which is what I'm doing oh. right now, which nice. is why I'm sitting in front of the computer. And so, yeah, <laughs> like I said, I've been trying to join um, one of these things. I think I did join in on like a snowdown session. Um, but I just sat in the corner and then I had to leave after like a couple of minutes because I had to get back to work. <laughs> right, right, right. So, but anyway, we've gone, um, we've gone three hours sometimes on those sessions. Oh yeah. Uh, studying, oh man. So I, it's oh badass. really? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. yeah. 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 Um, and then, you know, I like catching out on nation. Um, I always like it when you have a cool guest. Wendy's cool as shit. Cause you know, from Collider, you. Um, even, you know, a movie couple, I started following her cause of, you know, cause of that. And, for you know her ties to collider and stuff so yeah. and then i get to see your reactions on the mixed reactions yeah. we're always included on there i always try to catch those so for thankful. all the cool uh marvel stuff um but yeah like i said man i just wanted to come on here and chat with you live and just because like i said i've been trying to get on there on the yeah. discord forever so well, um, you made it you're here yeah you're yeah, here. yeah 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 Yep. What's your, uh, what's your question? What do you want to talk about? Don't really have any questions. Um, <laughs> what did y'all do to celebrate the fourth? I worked all day. <laughs> um, I I I watched Bad Batch this afternoon. I got up this morning and I watched some of my favorite Star Wars scenes, just to kind of get in the mood for it. Then we recorded our Invincible review, which is out now with uh, the yeah, Geek Buddies. Still. I haven't uh, it and I started okay. watching the uh, Randy Macho Man biography. That's what I did. Oh, I heard you talking so, about that on uh, yeah. SEN the other day, that you were going to yeah. start that. Did, did it uh, paint him in a bad light like you were I, I don't know. Or? I'm only 45 minutes okay. in, but I'm fucking okay. loving it. I'm fucking right, loving cool. it. So if it, if it takes a turn, I, I'm, I'm dreading the turn it's going to take. So Yeah, uh, it could probably happen. Yeah, yeah, I'm not much of a wrestler. The only wrestling stuff I'm really into is Showdown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Get into they the wrestle with stuff. the trivia questions. <laughs> yeah, I even try to, like, anybody who's a res wrestling fan, like, there's a girl that works at my second job. She's in the office in Florida, whereas mm -hmm. I work from home. Uh, but I try to get her into it. She never responded about if she ever watched it or not. But, um, like, I even I showed her the Jericho and Smith match, Kevin Smith, because, oh, you know, yeah. wrestling to bring her in. Right. Um, but yeah. So, like I said, that I don't know if I got anything out about it, but you know, I love those things. And then since I That's donated awesome. all that money to SEN that one time, I'm looking forward to the next live event so I can come in person. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's gonna be awesome. For oh sure. my gosh, that that can be a thing finally. Well, it'll yeah. be my it'll be my third one because I went to the two in Chicago for celebration. So, yeah. dude, the life events for for Schmodown is insane. It's I've nice. only been to a handful, just the ones that are local to LA. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, well, I got like lucky the energy is so good. Yeah, I got lucky because I was at celebration, so I got to go. Um, like oh. even it's so 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 weird because I I went to the Schmodown uh, event at celebration and saw Laura Kelly debut and mm -hmm. was so impressed with her. I walked up to her afterwards and I said, "Hey, I got to get a pick with you because I think you're the next Schmodown champ." And uh, so I definitely took a pick with her. I met her friend Alice, I believe. Yeah, Alice. And then. Um, the next day, I was at the Jedi Fallen Order panel, oh, yeah. and I was sitting next to some random dude, and he was like, we got to talking about the Schmodown, and he was like, oh, well, you want a meet and greet ticket? So, long story short, I ended up getting a meet and greet ticket from Laura Kelly, ah! and that's how I got to go to the event, because it was already uh, sold out at that time. Yeah. So, I lucked out at the last minute, and it was the coolest shit ever. Tried to nice. go to the top ten uh, show that night, but it was already sold out. So yeah, yeah, we had two we had two shows that night. It was crazy. You know, I didn't That's buy tickets short. in advance because I didn't know if I was going to be able to go. I didn't know if I would have transportation to get down there and all that stuff. So oh, it's totally cool, bro. We but, miss uh, it. We miss it like crazy, man. I, 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 I we were on we were on a roll, 
And we had all these plans for more live shows, and then COVID just completely Yay, COVID. We had a London <laughs> show all set up, booked, and everything, and we had to cancel it all because of COVID and stuff. So it sucks. Terrible. For sure. yeah, but yeah, sucks, but yeah. 2020 is a, 2020 was a different year. We're moving forward. People getting vaccinated. So hopefully things get back. And already Christian tweeted out the possibility of a live event, Schmodown event, outdoors in LA in July. So we shall see. So, you know, I love my live events, so I'm going to try to qualify to get on that. Uh, yeah. Can. You, you flourish in those damn things. I mean, look at the, uh, was it the spectacular when you were fucking deathly ill? No, that's right. And oh. fucking pulled out the wind. Like, come on, you thrive in that shit. That again. Don't ever feeds off the energy. <laughs> it's a different broke. energy. Just, it is. Yeah. It's, it's just for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, when your match this week with, uh, JTE was fucking stellar, even though, JT carried you. I oh God! I don't think he did either. I don't think, he did, never, James, I don't James, think he, did. he did. I'm never gonna get the fucking credit. You know that he spun I mean, the category that is his category that he put on the wheel. Which one so was logically, it? Sports? Action no. adventure. Action, action adventure. adventure. Right. Right. So. Uh, I mean, but anyway, whatever, man. It is what I it mean, is. People are never going to give you the those uh, beginning uh, personalities that came out. So I mean, I think you get your credit. Maybe not for you know current games, but. You know, you 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 brought the fucking characters to the showdown, basically. Yeah. So I got you know. I got two takeos, two KOs to start the season. So anybody slighting on my game ain't paying attention, that's for sure. How uh, are you feeling about your next matchup? I'm excited. Are you kidding? I've never beaten Ethan it's Irwin. Lightning, so yeah, I, lightning it's lightning less Shannon Miller, Ethan. So uh, I'm looking Ethan's forward to Ethan's kind of scary. He is like scary. The, no oh, the knowledge. Shit. Liz man. is fucking yep. good too, man. She yeah. Yeah. I, everybody doubted her, but I knew that. Her being an, uh, uh, somebody that Ethan was bringing in, she had to have some kind yep. of fucking you know, something behind her. And yep. she's definitely showing up and showing out now. Like, yep. she's living up to the credit that she was given, in my opinion. So I'm all about it. Another Absolutely. strong female competitor and a little ta ca little cat tank girl. That yep. one or that fucking five-pointer question. <laughs> that was just so random. Shit was totally. cool as hell. That was her favorite film. Yeah. Um, all right, James, we're going to get some super chats. Thanks for coming in, brother. I look yeah, forward man. To like I said, you. I just wanted to say what's up. I finally Thank got you. Going, you know. Nice chatting with oh. you. I see your Star Wars shirt. Oh, yeah. Respect. I got Yay. a oh. Star Wars shirt for nice. at least a day of the week for at least two weeks, I would think. Perfect. Ah. How it should be. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome, so. dude. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, thanks all for right. letting me come in. Wendy, Definitely. hello. Nice hello. to meet you. Nice to meet hey, you. I'll catch you around, man. Uh, yeah, I'll see you on the Discord, brother. Thanks so yes, much. Sir. Looking Later, forward guys. to it. All right, that was James Navario. It's pretty awesome. Wendy, I know you got to run, so let me get through these streamlabs real quick or super chats real quick for you. Uh, this is a great and perfect. This is Mukbang Reviews. This is a great day on the perfect day. Thank you. The outlaw needs a proper saber like his producers. She's uh, Wendy's fantastic. Uh, I thought uh, that was a Tangi slash NASA T-shirt, but it's actually a Sokotano, so pretty awesome. Um, let's see, Marmoth Hounce saying, everyone is whipping out their sabers. That's very funny. Uh, <laughs> Mukbang Review says, Sean, last movie back was Tenet. I waited and disliked it. I will watch again, but wouldn't. But would it help? Nolan's a great director. Watch it with captions. It'll help. There you go. That's going to help. Absolutely. I agree with you as well, Wendy. Uh, Mormoth Hounce says, where's Squirrel Girl in the MCU? It's time to eat nuts oh, and kick butts. Soon. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what's from the at t commercials? She was uh, the, supposed oh. to play Squirrel Girl, I think. What? Uh, Milena Vantrop, I think that's her name. She was supposed to play Squirrel Girl. That was the rumor before all things got shut down. So who knows? Who knows? We shall see. Um, Mukbang Review says, I asked about the mutants earlier, and it's a difficult situation. I would bring them all back except Phoenix slash Gene and Wolverine. Any thoughts? Yeah, Wendy, real quick. Do you want to oh. see the old uh, X-Men come back? Or the sorry, the most recent version of the X-Men come back? In any way, shape, or form, or do you want them the, to start all the over? character or played by the the play actor. played by the the same actor? Oh, yeah. uh, it's hard for me to say no to Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. True, that's True. really, really, really hard. But I felt like we got to the end of his journey with Logan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and agree. a part of me was kind of worried that you know, in the post credit, we were going to see the claws come through the dirt. Oh yeah, yeah. And I wondered. I was like, so you know, it's it's like uh, that that Inception, like the yeah. little top. That's it's kind of like, is it falling or is it not falling? We don't know. <laughs> uh, but I'm kind of glad they didn't and they let it be. And I think now Hugh can go and be more than just, uh, you know, Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. And agreed. so it's time with Phoenix, Jean Grey. They haven't really done her right 
I feel like Sophie Turner was kind of, it was not an easy task. I think she's a yeah. really phenomenal actress. I think she looked really fantastic. Yeah. I love her as Sansa. Um, if they could give her a better movie, I wouldn't mind seeing her back in the role, but they got to get like the right writers, the right stories. And now with, you know, Disney Marvel working on this together, it, it potentially, but I feel like they're going to start everything like all new. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. So uh, we shall see. Muckbang Review says, I've never played much board games, but isn't the idea to read cards and follow directions? How is this unlike standardized testing like the SAT? <laughs> <laughs> I will say some board games have like very long like guidebooks where you're like, I don't want to read this to play. I just really? want to play Oof. sometimes. Yeah. Yikes. Like we got all these um, small worlds expansions. So this is like the core. Mm -hmm. And then all these are expansions and Dustin and I got, I think river world for his, for Christmas. And we're like, okay, let's sit down and play. And I open the box. I'm like, I don't remember how to play. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to go through. <laughs> so we haven't replayed it yet. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. Lose the instructions. What can you do? Uh, Jim Sandal and donate. Thank you, Jim. He says, Wendy, Thank what is you. your favorite cosplay to do? Uh, John, have you ever done cosplay at Wendy? Is that a Wonder Woman 84 popcorn tin in the background? There's two of them. Nice. There's a reason why there's two of them, because Jim Sandlin sent me one. Oh. This is the most beautiful popcorn tin. It is Look, gorgeous. It's pink on wow. the inside. It's gorgeous. That I, It's so pretty that when we put popcorn in it, we line it. With That's wax smart. paper, so like <laughs> nothing, nothing is touching this. And then I put my little om nom on the inside when I'm not using it to eat. Um, favorite okay. cosplay? Yeah. Do, 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 do. I've done. I it wasn't really cosplay. It was really okay. a costume for a kids party. I used to do kids entertainment, which is how I, I right. met Dustin doing sword fighting and stuff like that. And so when the Clone Wars movie came out, I saw Ahsoka, and I was like, "Oh, I'm playing her." That was before I knew anything about Ahsoka. Right, and right. I had already like put my name on the board. I'm gonna cosplay as this character so I can go to you know perform as as this Jedi because all the other I didn't really look like any of the other existing Jedi. I could be like a generic Jedi, but I was like, no, I want to be a character in the universe. Right. So when she came out, I was like, great, she's alien. So it doesn't matter what race I am, I'm playing her. And I watched the movie, and I absolutely hated her. I was like, great, and I've committed. Great. So I was not happy until luckily. <laughs> Clone Wars, all of that changed, and now I'm like, you know, her biggest yeah. fan. So yeah. I would say that's one. Um, another one is I did a kind of, it's not a complete cosplay, but I did mm -hmm. one as Toadette from Mario. Oh, yeah. From yeah. Super Mario. It was really cute, but I lost the dress, so I have to get it or make another one. Yeah. And I think that's probably my two. I haven't done much cosplaying in a long time Okay. because it takes okay. a lot of effort. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've never done cosplay because of that, because I wouldn't do it half-assed, you know what I'm saying? And the people that create this cosplay, it's incredible the amount of talent you all have to like visualize what you want it to look at, spend the time putting the stuff together, some of you sewing it. Like Kalinowski builds his own costumes when he cosplays. He doesn't just buy a generic Captain America outfit off of Amazon or goes to the store. He literally gets the material, builds it, sews it, lays it out, cuts it, all of that kind of stuff. So... People do cosplays incredible. Molly Damon's cosplay, phenomenal. Yeah, stuff. oh, her dark ray is my favorite. Oh, her dark ray was incredible. So, so good. If I you could cosplay any character who, like, you know, skills oh. and all that aside, Oof. what would you want? Because I, I just thought of one I would probably want to do, which is Punchline. Oh, Joker's okay. New girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I really think, don't think know. about it. We'll, we'll talk about it on I'll Friday. Like about it. Okay, I like that. Add that to the show notes. <laughs> Part two. Uh, all right, Marmoth House says, how much dust is your rowing machine collecting? Yeah, you're not wrong. I got the rowing oh, machine, no. Marmoth, but I will definitely be getting back on it. Thanks for pointing out that I'm not in shape, though. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> what do you look like? Wink, wink. Oh, no. uh, Alan Smithy. Don't oh, Alan. Jesus, Alan, thank you. He said, great to see you again, Wendy, and thanks for having me on, Roca. Next week will be my one-year anniversary of coming on the Outlaw Nation show. Wow. It's been a blast, and I've loved meeting all your guests, but Wendy is definitely your coolest guest. Thanks. I don't Thank disagree. Thank you. Thank Wendy you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Smithy. It's very kind of you, brother. And thanks for being on the show uh, for a year, my man. It's, a, it's been a pleasure to have you in the nation and on the show. Uh, and last one here, Marvin Martin says, all this Marvin! to see... He says, all this to see, no, it's okay. All this to see mutants nipped by corn syrup. Oh, okay. 
I don't know what that means. I, I don't know what that means. When was the last time that happened to the the mutants? How they? Sir? How did they? Oh, I don't know. I have oh. to think about it. There's a joke and a reference in there. Hold on. Oh, is there? All right. Nipped by corn syrup. Corn syrup to me, then I'm thinking like blood because that's what they use to mix the red for blood on camera. Oh. For, for movies. In the movie Logan. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. I was Fair on points. the right tra right track with the <laughs> with the with the blood there. Oh, Fair this points. mutants nipped by corn syrup. <laughs> um. We are seven uh, likes away, or three likes away from hitting 150. So if you haven't, please uh, send it in. Wow, he's calling me Fat Shell Silverstein. Thanks, Mormoth. I appreciate it. At least donate more money if you're going to insult me. <laughs> Jesus. Just five, ten bucks. Yikes. Uh, anyway, all right. Let's uh, wrap it up here. Uh, Wendy has been more than kind to stay past two hours to hang out with us tonight. So can't thank her enough. Uh, and uh, Wendy, please uh, tell everyone what you got going on, where they can find you, everything you got, everything you got happening in your world, please. Oh, you mean my 50 million things that I do? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't get enough sleep. Uh, you guys can find me over on the Movie Couple channel. Dustin and I will be doing a live stream tomorrow at 2 p.m. PT on our channel there. Social media is just my name, Wendy Lee Zaney, on the bottom, as you can see. Um, if you are into TTRPG, I'm doing one more Jasper's Game Day on monday so i don't know if i can announce like what table and who dm is yet because i haven't gotten the official like okay on the graphics so i will just mm -hmm. say keep an eye on my uh social media for that but i do know that the game will be at 3 p.m pt and we're ah. playing pathfinder too oh nice yeah that's, awesome. that's, so that's awesome. gonna be fun uh definitely follow wendy at wendy lizani and shout out to the movie couple i mean they're they're closing in on fifty thousand subscribers so that's incredible I remember when Wendy got cost when that movie come across twenty thousand and all the work that she's done. It's paying off so well, and I'm so happy that people are, you know, appreciating what she does and going to her channel to see her and Dustin's reactions to things. So incredible stuff! Uh, and don't forget, a Friday, three p.m. PT, the launch of the new show here on the Outlaw Nation channel with me and Wendy. It'll be at three p.m. Let's take a look at one more time. Yep, John what and Wendy a fun explain intro. the world. Yeah, right. It's going to be great. So John we and Wendy it. explain the world happening 3 p.m. PT on Friday. All right, Wendy, I'm going to let you go. Thanks so much. Please feel free to go on with your night. I'm going to wrap it up here. Much love to you. I'm looking forward to Friday. Uh, I know, me and, too. Uh, and uh, I will tell you, and have, enjoy the rest of your May the 4th. I love you. Thank you. I love you. I will see you soon. I'm sure we'll be chatting via, you know, email yeah. and text for show notes. So I'll talk oh, to you real soon. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye, Wendy. everyone. Thank you for having me. You're the best. All right. There was Wendy Lee. She's fantastic. Oh, so much fun having her here on the Outlaw Nation uh, channel, especially on the Outlaw Nation show tonight. Hope you're looking forward to the show. 3 p.m. PT on Friday. We are doing it. John and Wendy explain the world. And basically, it's just that. Talking about the big stories of the week, but then also getting into some of this social media stuff. What's the big story trending? Why is it trending? What's the connection to it trending? All of that. A fun, fun show that we're going to explain. Hopefully, it branches out to where we get invited to go do and experience things and then creating videos to put on the chat, put on the show for you all to enjoy and us to watch for sure. And of course, it'll be live so you all can hang out with us from 3 p.m. on. Maybe it's, maybe it's an hour show, hour and a half show, depend on how the show goes along and how it plays out, but I'm so, so looking forward to it. Uh, and I'm so excited to have Wendy Lee as my co-host for this show. Um, all right, and uh, let me wrap up. Don't forget tomorrow. Oh, thank you, everybody. We've got 150 likes. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Love the Outlaw Nation. Thanks for watching us tonight. Thanks to everybody who sent in a super chat or a stream lab. Thanks to everybody who came in live and hung out with us. Jake Yacoveta, thank you, brother. Please, I'm looking forward to the uh, overlay you create uh, for the show on Friday. Also, thanks to Sean Barito for uh, producing the show today. Don't forget tomorrow, Geek Buddies uh, dropping the Bad Batch review. Laura Kelly joining us. We're going to record it tomorrow. should be out by 4 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, I might drop a video in the morning as well. Uh, I'll hear maybe a review or a trailer reaction. And then uh, Thursday, we've got to Impolite Juice, our polit political show. And then as I said, Friday, uh, we, we're starting all over again uh, uh, with the, or oh, starting 
our debut show of John and Wendy Explain the World. All right. Much love to all of you. Take care of yourselves. Be well. Make sure you get vaccinated, wear your mask, practice social distancing. And I'll end the show like I always end the show, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever you need to do to get through the next second, next minute, next hour, next day, next week, next month, and next year, my friends, I want you to do it. You never know what's waiting for you on the other side. It may surprise you, uh, and it may change your life. If you can just make it through the tough moments, the tough times, things are slowly, slowly getting back to some form of normal. I know that scares some people. I know that excites some people. But always be aware of your mental health. Do what's best for you to kind of navigate the situations. And more than anything else, give yourself a break. Give yourself patience. Give yourself grace to figure this out as you go along. All right. I love you madly. And I'll talk to you next week with another brand new live episode of the Outlaw Nation show. Much love. Peace. Mm -hmm.